<laughs> Greetings, everyone, <laughs> and welcome to a periodically perverse <laughs> episode of Monster Party. Monster Party. It's monstrous. It's, it's periodical. It's 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 reading. It's reading. There's nothing at, sexier than reading. And looking at pictures, it's publishing, and words, and, and reading with pictures is yes. the best kind. Yes, it's, I'm so excited. I am too. And and who are you, sir? I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. And for this topic, oh. Oh, this is a sprawling one. And as I was doing my research, I didn't even realize, like, the, the more I got into it, I was like, man, there are so many entries into this topic. Yes. And so let's get right to it. This is a gold mine. It, it really, it really is. You yes. are you are absolutely correct, Larry. Matt, what is our topic? The topic is horror and sci-fi magazines. Horror and sci-fi magazines. I like magazines. I love magazines. I I can't get enough magazines. Magazines made us. It did. It did. And for this topic, we have the guest of guests. This is a gold mine. Kind of our pope. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> this is hor- horror and sci-fi royalty, Absolutely. Um, without a doubt. This yes. uh, this man is a publisher, a writer, a novelist, a filmmaker, an illustrator, a convention organizer, and he is also the co-creator and publisher of Starlog. Fangoria, Starlog, Cinemagic, Fangoria, oh and Cinemagic. other magazines. Oh magazines that we grew up with. That's uh, right. Uh, an inspiration to all of us. Who uh, is la- it? Ladies and gentlemen, Carrie O'Quinn. Carrie O'Quinn! Thank you so much, Gary. Thank you. Woo. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Thanks oh, for making this scene. Are, yes, do you absolutely. think you need to explain to people what magazines are? <laughs> yeah, really. Yes, well, I, I think, think we they, do. Were, they were printed on paper. Wait, That's no, right. What's That's paper? right. It's paper. Oh, my gosh. I know. Oh, I, I, Carrie, I, I just have to say, I was so thrilled. A, a, every weekend, I would go. When I was a kid, I would go to the bookstore. Now, I, I did have... Wait, be, bookstore? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Where they sold magazines and stuff. And, and look, I had a subscription to Famous Monsters. Okay, that was my first one. But you know, I also wanted to advance. I, I wanted to know about science fiction and, right, and right. all of a sudden, I went into the store one time and this this magazine leaped off the, the, the yeah, stand yeah, saying, yeah. Larry, take me home but, because it, I'm so cool and so fantastic yes. and it had spaceships on it. But, but Carrie, I wanted to ask you how you started in with in the magazine business because it was actually not at first, it wasn't like horror and sci-fi genre. No. It was a different uh, different arena that you guys were doing magazines for. How yeah. does someone start getting you know into publishing magazines? Well, it, let me just go back before I moved to New York. When I was a student at the University of Texas, I was majoring in commercial art, and somehow... I got appointed to be the art director of the student humor magazine at the University of Texas, okay. which was called the Texas Ranger. <laughs> and, and lo and behold, I mean, I was uh, actually studying, you know, how to paint pictures and do sculpture and uh-huh. stuff like that. And I said, I don't want to be a starving artist the rest of my life. <laughs> God, yeah, no. I, right. I, you can make money at art. And so I did that for a good while at the University of Texas with the Texas Ranger. And then uh, I did some bad things that basically <laughs> caused the demise of that magazine forever and ever. But that's another story. <laughs> no, whoa, 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 whoa. That'll be a hell. You, 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 we'll have another podcast set it, for that. set it on way. fire or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, did, I put some things in an illustration that you, I sneaked them in. And, oh, okay. Oh, you're one of those and, rebel guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah okay. Okay. Well, when you're a student, that's what you're supposed to be. That's right. right. That's right. You're that's supposed right. to buck yes. the system. Exactly. Right. And so one of the editors of the Ranger and I decided to start an off-campus magazine for the whole Southwest Conference. And that was about uh, eight different schools at that time. It was SMU and TCU and Baylor and the University of Texas and so forth. And so we started a magazine, and Hugh Hefner was my kind of idol then, because here was a, oh. here a man who had you know, started a magazine in a whole category that didn't even exist. Yes. Right, right. He'd done a lot of things that were unacceptable, 
and that were very daring. Right. And lo and behold, he not only made money at it, but he created an empire that started clubs and all kinds of things. Right. A lifestyle. Yeah. Exactly. Gave us jobs, many and, of us. And he had also started as a student. Uh, exactly. With, yeah. So he was he was kind of our, our idol. And we started a magazine called Bacchanal. And it was <laughs> nice. Bacchanal? That's right. That's right. Oh. Okay. And That's what my van is named. <laughs> <laughs> and Hefner had, you know, the little Playboy bunny. We had our own little character called Dipso, who was a crazy little creature who partied too much and drank too much. <laughs> like, like, nice. like us. Like hey. us. <laughs> right. and, and we had a centerfold in the magazine that had, uh, the, the, the girls weren't nude, but they were sexy. And we had articles and humor and cartoons and, wow. you know, all kinds of fun stuff. And we did that for uh, a good while. So I had worked also for John Henry Falk in the University of Texas uh, while I was in Austin. Mm -hmm. Now, Falk was a very famous man in Austin, Texas at the time because he'd done some things that were kind of daring and uh, racy. Uh, racy, exactly. But he had started a, an advertising company and had a magazine called Austin on the Go. And I worked for him as the art director at that company for a while, too, and I loved it. Wow. So when I moved to New York... At the tender age of 24, I uh, got a magazine job as an art director for a romance magazine. <gasps> oh, wow. And okay. It was called Intimate Stories. Intimate oh. Stories. Oh. And I think I wrote for that. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was a fun job because what I did each month was read 10 fictional stories that had been written about mainly this was a, a magazine for girls who were teenagers and that oh, sort of right, thing right. Oh, yeah. and okay. it was uh, it was about romance and you know the problems of sex and love and yeah, don't well, get me started it. well you know i mean guys could like that <laughs> oh yeah. absolutely oh, yeah. Yeah. but what i would do is i'd read i'd read the stories and then i would basically cast a photograph to illustrate each story and i would cast models and hire a, uh, a photographer and maybe a location and that sort of thing. In other words, I got to be a producer mm -hmm. and to produce a photograph for each of these stories that illustrated the story and made it look like it was real. Mm. You know, right, right. This was not an, a, a, a drawing or an illustration. Right. It was yeah. an actual had, photograph. Had more impact. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and there was a crazy guy from Brooklyn who was working – in that art pool at this magazine company with me. And his name was Norm Jacobs. And he was doing a magazine called Movie Stars. Oh. And we were kind of uh, amazed by each other because I was this hick from the hills of Texas. And he, he was this Jew boy from the streets of Brooklyn, you know. And we were, we were both kind of fascinated with each other. Uh, match made in heaven. Yeah. Well, <laughs> It was it was it was a strange uh, relationship. <laughs> Can they share a magazine without driving each other crazy? <laughs> I went on to another company and worked for a TV magazine and did a bunch of other stuff and and then one day Norm called me up several years later. We hadn't even seen each other in a good while and he said, "Let's get together. I want to talk business with you. He said, you're, you're into Ayn Rand and all that making money stuff, that capitalism stuff. <laughs> and I said, yeah, <laughs> that's right. I am. I know Ayn Rand. I'm working with her. Yeah. And so he said, all right, let's start a publishing company. And he had the idea, I'll have to give him credit, that we needed to start a soap opera magazine because at the time, I think there was about 16 soap operas on the three <gasps> networks. Yeah, it was like yeah, yeah. soap opera mania. Back in the day. Yeah, and they were five days a week, and we mm -hmm. knew there was millions of people who tuned in every day right. and lived lives with these characters. Right. And uh, I had worked at Gray Advertising for a couple of years producing television commercials and Procter and Gamble was one of my clients and I knew that they actually owned some of the the shows and that they basically lived off of the advertising that those shows put out right, for their yeah, products. Yeah. So I knew that you know this was an audience of millions that was very thoroughly dedicated but I also knew that the field was not taken seriously. It was daytime television. It yeah. was soap operas. It was for people who didn't have anything better to do in the daytime. Right. And it was kind of brushed aside and not, not taken seriously, as I say. So we started a magazine called Daily TV Serials, and we actually 
did real interviews with not only the actors, but the producers and the writers. And because we were, took, we were taking the field seriously, we put out a magazine that actually had color pages in the magazine. <gasps> right. And that, was, that had never been done for yeah. a fan magazine. It was always just black and yeah, white. Right, yeah, right, right. And so the, the shows loved us, and they would let us go on the set. We could shoot. Um, cool. You know, behind the scenes and all that kind of stuff. And at that time, most of the shows were done in New York City, which was very convenient. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there was only three shows that were done out here in L.A. Mm -hmm. at that time. And so, you know, it was it was great. And we did a magazine that became very successful very quickly. And at that point, there were no daytime Emmy Awards. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we took the field so seriously and, and treated it as if it were real, you know, creative uh, work a, a that was being done, yeah. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> lo and behold, the Emmys decided to start daytime television awards <gasps> for the first time. Because wow. of you. Well, I don't, I don't take the full credit, but I think... You had well, well, come on. Well, you had an yeah, influence. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think what we did contributed to the fact that the field was suddenly taken seriously right. for the first time. And they staged the very first daytime Emmy Awards in front of Rockefeller Center, and they invited us. We had a lot of different photographers and reporters nice. there. We covered the event, and we devoted a full issue of our magazine to the very first Daytime Emmy Awards. Oh, cool. wow. And what awesome. that taught me was that the fans in a particular field can be ignored they're invisible, yes. but they're out there somewhere. <laughs> Untapped. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Exactly. <laughs> and if you can give them what they're waiting for, oh. you have got an audience that will buy your magazine every month. Right. For life. And, right. And lo and behold, that served me well a few years later when we started Starlog Magazine. Oh. Now, Carrie... Because you had a love for horror and sci-fi, right? I oh, mean, that's yes. All this time, like I, mainly science fiction, right? So yeah. where did where did that come from, though? Because I want to child, you, as you were growing up, like what kind of movies did you watch? What, what did you grow up on? Well, there was a movie theater in Austin, Texas, called the Queen Theater, and it was kind of an old theater. It wasn't a first-run house, mm -hmm. but what they did was they showed double features, mm -hmm. and they would show a lot of old movies. Wow, nice and. <clears throat> uh, one of the movies that I particularly loved was called Rocket Ship. And what it was was a feature film that was put together with all the old black and white Flash Gordon serial That's right. Oh, wow. I have it on 16 millimeter. Nice. Wait, it was, it was called, yes, wait, it was called Rocket Ship? It's called Rocket Ship. It's like a, compi a compilation. But it's, but it's, 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 they <laughs> cut down all the chapters of that right. serial to make it a tight like 90 kidding. minutes. Right. Yeah. But you oh. knew, but Flash Gordon was a character in it, right? Oh yeah, right. no, it's just the yeah. hero. It's just the serials, but just cut down. I right. got gotcha. you. Right. I got gotcha. you. And okay. they and they did several features that yeah. were made of the serials. And Buster Crab was the hero. Mm -hmm. Here was right. this oh yeah, dashing, handsome, blonde Adonis. You know that was fighting Ming the Merciless. Oh, oh yes. And, oh. Uh, you know, and I just I loved that because I was into science fiction from the time I was about two feet tall. Oh, nice. And oh, and man. I remember asking my mother when I was a little kid. I said, do you think, Mom, do you think we'll ever actually set foot on the moon? <gasps> and and what your mom say? She said, I think it will happen in your lifetime. It won't happen in mine, but I think it'll happen in yours. And I thought that was the most exciting thing my mother could have told me. Sure. Wow. Yeah. yeah. And guess what? It happened in her lifetime. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> Although nice. some of those conspiracy people will disagree with you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We think they're nut jobs. No, but I grew up basically in the, in the 50s were my teen years. Right, right. And I grew up on all the George Powell movies starting oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Destination those. Moon, oh, yeah. When yeah. Worlds Collide, The War of the Worlds, Conquest of Space, mm -hmm. all of those oh, movies. Oh, yes. And I loved them. Mm -hmm. And in fact, when we started Starlog, because there was no new science fiction being done then on right. movies or television. Right. Uh, what we did for the first year or so of the magazine was do retrospectives about those movies that right, had been right. my inspiration as a kid. Right. And uh, we went back and interviewed George Powell and, oh, you know, did a lot awesome. of... You, that's one of my favorite, one of my favorite covers of Starlog magazine is the one from When Worlds Collide. And you actually... Oh, the, the rocket ship. ship. The yeah. rocket ship. I, I, I mean... Uh, 
Carrie, when I saw that film for the first time on television, on Creature Feature as a kid, I mean, it was magical to me. And to see that image on the magazine, I flipped out. And Carrie, this is like 76. So this was, talk about an untapped yeah. audience. This is before because Star Wars. Before, before this, Star Wars. you've got famous monsters, famous monsters, which we all know and love. We do, yeah. we do. And uh, But yeah. it was a different entity. It was a different creature. It was and something it, that was yeah. kind of, there was a lot of puns. A little bit more and, for the younger audience. Yeah, right. and, and, mm-hmm. and Starlog took it seriously. I think I, exactly. like, I, I think mean, a quote it, from you, a quote from you was saying that like you wanted a science fiction, ma- like you wanted the Time magazine for science fiction fans. That's exactly what I wanted. Something that really took it seriously. Plus, Forey, you know, had a lot of puns and funny stuff in right, there. Right. And he mainly focused on the actors that played the roles, Boris Karloff and right, all, you right. know, the people like that. We actually started doing things about the special effects yes. and, right, and right. the the matte painting and the makeup and all the things that the magic of movies and lo and behold we discovered that we got tremendous letters from readers who said do more of that do more of that yeah. Yeah. I, I mean yeah. I, I'm going to say for listeners if you can believe it there is actually an issue a Starlog magazine which I have right up there and on the cover is a guy doing a matte painting. Right. On yes. the freaking that, cover that's like, of yeah. the magazine. That, that was like a new thing. And to, plus, it was in color, too. Yeah. yeah. Color. And to make, to make the behind-the-scenes people, and I'm not just talking about the directors, but Mm-mm. the special effects people and making them into stars. Well, I mean, right. we put Rick Baker on the cover of Starlog when nobody knew who he was. Right, right. <laughs> yeah. was, they said makeup. There wasn't even an Oscar at the right. time right. for makeup. Right. Yeah. And... Lo and behold, when they actually established a makeup Oscar, Rick Baker got the first Oscar. That was right, back in right, right. what eighty two for American World for right. London. Yeah, mm-hmm. that yeah. was. And the funny thing is, if you look back, you go, "Wait a minute, that was the first makeup." Yeah, The Exorcist, mm. Dick Smith, not you know nothing. Yeah, nothing. All right. those great makeup effects before American World for London, nothing. And yeah. it was. It took them a while to get to that. Oh and yeah. Starlog was also a magazine that would sometimes feature film composers in the genre. Right. Oh, right. Yeah. And and if I recall correctly, sometimes you were able to to buy uh soundtracks. Well, one of my great joys in, you know, establishing Starlog and and it finally once George Lucas did Star Wars and and we had a new science fiction movie for the first time in years uh and it made money. And our circulation doubled with issue number sure. seven, yeah. wow. and and we went from quarterly to monthly, <laughs> and so once that happened, and we started making money, and we weren't worried about going out of business next week. Right, right. You know, I was able to begin to do some other projects that were in my heart and soul to do, and one of them, I loved movie music. Mm. And I had been a huge fan of the Lee Stevens music for all the George Powell movies. And, right. you know, I bought every soundtrack album on vinyl that nice. they published. You're, you're a kindred spirit with James. Yeah, yeah. James uh, is a uh, soundtrack collector. He's Mr. Soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, he, he, is. he is. He Although is. back in the day, it was sometimes hard to find those albums. Yeah. And it was uh, very hard. They produced. Because they didn't do movies like that. They only did movies that had singing in it or right, right. Know, right. Yeah. a general audience popular movie. And the science fiction movies were not that. Right. Right. So it was very hard to find things like that. And lo and behold, I, I came out here to California uh, one year, and I met a man named Albert Glasser. Mm. Oh, yes. yes. Uh, yeah. Oh, my God. He did all those great 50s soundtracks. Oh, yeah. okay. yes. Amazing right. Colossal Man oh, and yeah. all those. Mm. He had done almost 100 soundtracks oh, for God. real cheap horror and science fiction movies. Yeah, yeah. And he, he, I met him, and we became friends. That's awesome. And he said that he had worked on the soundtrack to Rocket Ship XM. <gasps> what? And he said that uh, it was the score was written by Ferdy Grofay, who was the great American composer who did Grand Canyon Suite and a lot of great American classical music. Wow, wow. He had done three movie scores, and Rocket Ship XM was one of them. Uh-huh. And Albert Glasser gave me the original master recordings, which wow. were these huge 16-inch transcription discs. Wow. <laughs> I mean, they weren't even on tape at that time, because this was done in the 40s. Yeah. Oh, my God. And he loaned them to me. I took them to New York, took them to an engineer at CBS. Mm-hmm. He 
recorded them and d- did what we would call today digitizing it. Right. It wasn't right. done then. Like, yeah, sure. Okay. But sure. He, he cleaned it up, took all the pops out and the hiss and, you know, enhanced the range and all that kind of stuff. And I issued the first Starlog soundtrack album to Rocket Ship XM. Wow. And uh, I wrote the liner notes for it and designed the cover and everything. And I was... Even I even got to design the record label. So I, I, I was I was having a ball. Mm-hmm. And you should have thrown in a song of your own. Well, <laughs> I saved that soundtrack, which is really beautiful, from oblivion. Right, right. Because in a few more years, those discs would have fallen apart. Right, right. And it would have been lost forever. Yeah. And so I did that, and we advertised it in the magazine. And I remember behold, seeing the ads. Yeah. We, oh, yeah. Sold, yeah. We sold copies of it, and I said. We're going to start a branch called Starlog Records, oh, and then we did some other albums. That's I did awesome. a whole music, a whole album of music from Albert Glasser movies, mm-hmm. including cool. Colossal Man and you yeah, know, all yeah. these. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's awesome. That's and, so cool. And uh, and then I got to doing some, you know, more contemporary things. I guess you'd say that weren't strictly science fiction, right? Because I was a huge Hitchcock fan. Oh, yeah. And I loved all the scores that Bernard Herrmann sure. had. Oh, yeah. Big fans here. And one of my favorite movies of Hitchcock's was North by Northwest. Yep, mm-hmm. sure. It had never been released as an album. That's one of his best scores. Too. One yeah. of his best scores, absolutely. So I went over to London and got Laurie Johnson, who had worked with Bernard Herrmann, Benny, as he called him. Mm. He'd worked with him on a lot of scores over there. Right. And he conducted the London Studio Symphony Orchestra with the score to North by Northwest. Oh and we released probably the first digital soundtrack album ever. I bought that album. Is that oh. right? Oh. Wow. And you still have it? Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. I do too. And I again, <laughs> I designed the album. Amazing. I put an insert page in there that because there was too much to say in photographs and everything. Sure, right. So it had a lot. It, it was quite a package, you know. And I said, this is for people like me. I knew there was folks like you out <laughs> yeah. there. Yeah, right, right. And I said, this is for people like me that are just going to cream when they see <laughs> this. Right, right. Did you cream, James? Oh, I'm just curious. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know you keep a journal. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Karen, you know, when Starlight came, like it came at such a perfect time to come out because it was 76 and then May of 77, a film called Star Wars comes out. And how did it, how, heard did, of how, it. Did things, <laughs> how did things change? I mean, not only your circulation, but you, you saw now the fans come out of the woodwork. You saw this kind of whole new generation of, uh, of like horror nerds, like nerds finally kind of had their, their day in the sun in a way, right? Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, and once Starlog, you know, put, Star Wars on the cover of issue number seven. I mean, we had an X-Wing fighter. Yes. That same mm-hmm. photo. Yeah, yeah. George didn't release many photographs from the movie before it was out. Right. We mainly had uh, Ralph McQuarrie artwork. Right. Yes. right. Yeah. 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 Uh, but we had that one photograph, and Time Magazine put that same X-Wing <laughs> picture on their cover. <laughs> oh, my God. No. And when, when Time Magazine says, here's a new movie that's on the cover of our magazine, yeah. that's when you knew that science fiction was considered important right. for the first time in years. Right. Maybe yes. for the first time ever. Yeah, well, like it, ra- it raised the bar for everybody because now uh, the movie studios saw that, oh my gosh, this science fiction film has made a ton of money. Well, we got to jump on the bandwagon. Yeah, we we got to start coming up with our science yeah, fiction. Yeah, and there was thing. a negative side to that as yeah, well, well because yeah. for every Star Wars, you get a lot of imitators from you know Italy and somebody that had uh, you know a hundred grand and they painted some spaceships and trusted their luck. Okay. Although some of those are some like the, our favorite they're, movies they're, now. No, they're they're still entertaining. Are you yeah. making fun of Star Crash? That's what I'm. Because, you know, because, I love because Star Crash. there's an article that I loved in Starlight. I love Star Crash. You guys Crash. talk all about Star Crash, and I, and in the article it actually says, "Wow, they're trying to make the spaceships really quick. They they take pieces of wood, slap it together, take glue. They took model pieces, didn't even bother to take them off the trees and <laughs> slap them on and glued it. And, yeah." And, uh, I'm like, oh, oh, I can do that. I can make a spaceship like that. And when I saw the film, I mean, Sean and I, we have this mutual love for that film. It's, it's well, cheap. I it's love not, it too. But, but it's space is like it's like got Christmas lights in it. I mean, it's it's, it's very uh, colorful. I love it. But the thing with the but, but the thing with the movie like that though is that Star Wars was kind of a, a pivotal event. Mm-hmm. It was a cultural and phenomenon. A c- right, cultural right. phenomenon, and I felt like it 
in its own way, took that kind of fantasy element of science fiction and took it very seriously. Some of the imitators, I don't think quite did. And so you got a little bit of hit and miss when it came to quality, but it did start a wave of big blockbuster science fiction movies. Right, right. What followed was Close Encounters. Uh-huh. And Star Trek. Uh, well, Star, Star Trek. Trek. I mean, yeah, it, it was, well, it, it's think, Superman. It's Superman. And, I mean, and you have these great covers on your magazine. And the thing that's so exciting is, as much as I love famous monsters, in in Starlog, you had color, color pictures. Oh yeah, I was like so excited. And the and the other thing is is I think it it didn't matter if it was a a cheap science fiction film if it was on the cover. Man, it was like after Star Wars. Matt and I we we were, were talking about this. We wanted anything that was science fiction. No, I wanted to see everything. Right. Like, right. I, mean, I wanted to see everything. Have, I, mean, you, uh, you, I was so excited for Battlestar Galactica. Me too. <laughs> I was. Yeah, me so too. It was an I, event for TV. One of my, oh, my, one of my goodness. One of my favorite issues is the one, it's that, that one up there with the, it's the spaceship, see the blue one? Sure, and that's, the, that's, like that's, the angel it's ship. It's the angels one. Yeah, yeah. And, and I didn't know, I mean, I, I got what the is mag. What yeah, Exactly. It looks magical and mystical and blue in outer yeah. space. And yeah. I love that blue. Yeah. And, but, but it's like, you were like, Throwing these images up there on this magazine, and dude, I was a sucker for it. I got a subscription to Starlog, and I yeah, every yeah. issue, every issue, you you were so methodical because every cover that you put on, I'm like, oh, this is great. Oh, look at this. Oh, I mean, you even put James Bond on there, Superman. Yeah, uh, I mean, but it was also it was tapping into, like I said, it was tapping into um, a golden uh, age uh, and, and up and coming filmmakers. You know, yeah. it was it was not just. Oh, I like you know I like monsters. I like spaceships. It was like people who creative young yeah, people who wanted scenes. to get into this. And Star Wars, Star Wars did that too. It opened the floodgates of like now. Not only was this a popular movie, you would see like these articles and hear things on TV about how they made the models and all that. That was that yeah. that, that kind of was was a new thing. Well, you know? and also because with Star Wars, there was a lot of things that people we, we hadn't if they had been done before, they hadn't been done much. Right. And yeah, when you had like go well. motion and all these special effects yeah. techniques. The, what is that blue screen? Yeah, the blue screen. I remember and, seeing the blue screen for the first time and going, a, what, what is that? How does that work? Yeah. Right, how do they right. change blue into stars? And then you see a little <laughs> camera like moving well, it's run by computer. Computer, oh my God, that's so yeah. alien to me. And you the know? ship doesn't move. The, the camera, camera moves. moves. Yeah. So it's on a track. Yeah. And like, oh my gosh, I was so confused. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in a good way. In a good yeah. way. <laughs> yeah, but nothing was as exciting as as seeing the Star Wars Holiday Special actually made the cover of Starlog <laughs> oh, magazine yeah, with, right. with B. Arthur. That's one of oh, yeah. it's just yeah. it was B. Arthur's I think crowning moment. Really. <laughs> right, right. She made Starlog as well. Yeah. Yeah. Golden Girls was her crowning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, well, but you know, we we started the magazine when there, were, as I said, there was no science fiction alive, and then once it became hot, once <gasps> Lucas and Spielberg and right, you know right. everybody else jumped into the field. Suddenly, we had been there all along, and we right. were the voice of science fiction. Right, right. right. So we were, we were already established, and we weren't jumping on a bandwagon. Right, right, right. We, right. we were there before the bandwagon started rolling. Yeah, right. yeah. And we, as you say, we also put color in, and not just you know stills from the movie, yeah. or of the star, but stills that showed people doing the matte painting and right. building the models and you know doing their motion control cameras to follow the spaceship in the trench or whatever right, mm-hmm. right. yeah and so we were showing you the behind the scenes magic of these movies in full color so that you could see it and we were also telling the story of how you know Spielberg started out as a fan he loved movies just like me just like you right yeah. mm-hmm. and and now he was making movies. And so the, right. the, the underlying message of our magazine throughout all of this is you can do it too. Right. right. And that was something that a lot of our audience responded to. And once again, because we got so much correspondence that said we love the behind the scenes stuff and the way you show how, you know, it's done. And that's when we started Cinemagic. Oh, yes. Oh, Cinemagic. Cinem- <sighs> Still have all those. Yeah, you yeah. too. Yeah. The, your first issue of Cinemagic. I mean, listeners go, "Oh my gosh, there was another." Yes, listeners. This this issue, the, this magazine was so great because it it gave more for like 
young filmmakers we're in, solely in, devoted to like how to you know make making I, this movies. is how you do it if you're yeah. if you're a kid at home and and, right. and you're trying to figure out here you can do your own thing the first cover on the cover it's rocket ship xm yep Oh, and I, I bought that first issue, and I read it cover to cover, and go, I, I can make my own movie, my spaceship movie. And oh. the feature of that first issue regarding Rugged Ship XM was uh, some new scenes were being shot, right? Right. The guy who owned the film, Wade Williams from Kansas City, had decided that he was going to remake some of the scenes and do them with more up-to-date special effects Mm -hmm. so he had to recreate the model for the spaceship and you know a lot of stuff like that and fortunately we had become friends he he loved the magazine so he got hold of me and said you know if i can supply you with the materials or anything at all i'm happy to so we had a kind of a a first-hand coverage of what he did to remake rocket ship xm and at the same time we did a tribute to the original movie and why it was worth right spending right. money on you yes. know? Yeah. right right yeah. it is a kind of a classic classic 50s space age movie absolutely you know? it's great lloyd and, bridges isn't it yeah it's yeah. Really a good movie and those scenes are pretty seamless when it comes to putting them in with the original movie oh yeah did a good job with right, that right right and uh, Carrie, I have to say that um, Cinemagic is a special magazine for me <laughs> yes. because in issue 19, uh, there's a section of the magazine, a regular section, which was called Producers Bulletin Board. Yes. I love right. looking at the yeah. student yeah. Film, filmmakers or just young people who are making little movies could send in like information, like little blurbs about their movies exactly. and little photos. And um, my a friend of mine and I, uh, Jim McLaughlin, who's now actually a, an effects guy, a special effects guy, um, we, were, we were making a horror film together and we got our little blurb and a photo of this like little <gasps> corpse in it. I just want to read the little You're blurb. in it! <laughs> You're in the magazine! It, it, actually, it's called Ring. Because <laughs> it was like a, a cursed Sue. ring. Yeah. Sue, Sean Sheridan, <laughs> Sue! Uh, I just want to read you the blurb. This was... Ring horror. A strange old woman's ring has a curse on a young girl. Surprise ending. <laughs> so it has my name, my ad- address in there, and it was just like a little blurb. Was the surprise ending that you didn't finish it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. Wait, did you not get a picture of it? I, I did. Yeah, there's a little yeah, picture of little... like the corpse of the. Of yeah. the oh, but you're not there. there. Okay. No, no, it's a picture of our of our effect. So, oh, all right. But that was like the greatest thrill because I didn't know. Well, like we sent it off. It's like here's my. And what do you know if it was going to get in there? And it, not only is it in there, we got a photo in there. It's it's great. Well, but so good. You have to realize that the reason we put that section in the magazine was because this was before the internet existed. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. And the only way you know for people to get in touch with other people who might be interested in the same strange stuff they're interested <laughs> right. in was through a magazine like right. this. Yeah, absolutely. So we put stuff in there and we connected a lot of people. They would see right. something and they'd say, oh my God, he's right here in my hometown. <laughs> right, and he's right, making right. a crazy movie that I want to be a part of. And people <laughs> got together and started working together. And that was one of our great uh, yeah, achievements that. with yeah. that. Plus, the other thing that I'm very proud of is that we started... The Cinemagic uh, Short Film Search. Right. Yes. And we did that with the School of Visual Arts, the film department of the School of Visual Arts in New York. We co sponsored this awards event every year. And we would uh, take submissions for short films. I think they had to be no more than 15 minutes. Right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and you could be on 8 millimeter, you could be on 16, or mm-hmm. you could be on video. Mm hmm. I think it was before Super 8, or it was near the beginning of Super 8. Right. And anyway, we, we would get these uh, submissions, and we got hundreds of them. <laughs> really? And I looked at every one of them, and we had a whole <gasps> team awesome. of people who judged them. <sighs> and each year, we would pick the best ones, and we would give awards. I designed a trophy that we had made. That's awesome. A great-looking oh. trophy. Thank you yeah. very much. I was pleased with it, too. And, uh, <laughs> and we, I would invite a celebrity. Of some kind, like I had Isaac Asimov there one year. No way! Oh yeah, I had some great people who would come in and hand the trophy. We'd get a a theater in New York, and for one evening we would have these awards. And kids came from, you know, Des Moines and Podunk and Dimebox, Texas, and places (laughs) like that. You know, and they would come there and they received an award. 
And don't you believe that they took their career seriously from that point on? Sure. Oh, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. But, and in fact, let me just tell you a story in connection with that, because years ago when I went to Austin and I met Robert Rodriguez when he was shooting a movie called The Faculty there. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love that movie. And, yeah, um, it's a good movie. He said, Carrie, I know you don't remember this, but he said, when I was a teenager, I entered your Cinemagic short film search <laughs> contest. <laughs> And he said, I had this little film that I'd done with my family in the backyard. He said, to be honest, it was kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> but, but, but he said, I got my judging form back. And, it, you know, we gave everybody their scoring, how they scored mm-hmm. in right. each category. And he said, I didn't, you know, I got my scores. But he said, at the bottom of the page, there was a handwritten note. And it said, you didn't win a prize this year. But I think you have promise as a filmmaker. And if you keep working hard, someday you can make real movies. Signed, Carrie O'Quinn. Wow. No. That's awesome. And Robert said, that meant more to me than winning a trophy. Wow. Well, I, I since now that I moved out here to California, I've met several other filmmakers who grew up on Cinemagic, and it would, educated them, and it inspired them. People right. like Guillermo del Toro. Mm. Oh, People yes. like J.J. Abrams. That mm-hmm. was one of his... Uh, one of his favorite publications. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Spielberg at one point said that was his favorite magazine That's awesome. in the world. Wow. <laughs> I was Absolutely. always amazed by just the things that you never thought of that you could do an easy special effects yeah. with, you know, using mm-hmm. some right, sort of right. gelatin or, or something. There was a I always remember there was one cover that had a, like a horrific kind of makeup effect where skin was coming off of a skull. Yes. <laughs> and I, I just love that. It was like, oh man, that's what I want to do. <laughs> But, See, and I, and I like the stop motion stuff because yeah. he did yeah. they, 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 I, I uh, how to all, make, yeah. And, and what was also interesting about that magazine is that you used lower budget films that used a lot of special effects as examples of how to do these effects, mm-hmm. like the Don Doler films. Yes. Like Alien Factor. Yes. And I remember yeah. Alien Factor, I mean, I'm telling you, so many of those images are just just emblazoned in my brain from the magazine yes. years before yeah. I ever saw that movie. Right, you yeah. saw photos. And the movie's yeah. fun. You know, it's, it's a low-budget science fiction horror movie. But when you look at all the the costumes and the effects, you're like, there, there's somebody who took this seriously, put a lot of love into it. Right, right. And, uh, and the magazine broke it down in a way that was easy to understand, yet not talking down to you. Right. Well, and just to give credit where it's due, Don Doler is the guy who actually created Cinemagic, but he was publishing it as a kind of a fanzine, and he had a very small circulation on it, and and we saw that, and we said, that's a great title, and he's doing what we want to do, but we want to do it for real. And we, we bought that from him and got him involved in it, and that's when we started publishing Cinemagic as a legitimate you know, awesome. color magazine. Right, right. Cool. That's so cool. So, but he's the guy who launched it. Okay. Wow. So okay. So you know, Starlight is out. It's very successful. Star Wars has come out. Cinemagic, nineteen seventy nine. Oh. You uh, release another another magazine, and up until this point, you know, for you know, die hard horror fans, we had famous monsters, mm-hmm. and like you said, it was kind of it was our little, bread and butter, a little, little bit more playful. Yeah, tongue in cheek, younger yeah. audiences. But now, you know, late seventies, early eighties. You had kind of like the slasher boom, and you had effects like Tom Savini doing effects, and it, that was kind of burgeoning now too. That was opening up into a whole other world, and you guys released Fangoria. Fangoria, and I remember that magazine really well too because I remember the very first issue on the newsstand with Godzilla. Godzilla was on the cover. Yeah. Like, yeah. First of all, the name just grabbed me immediately. Fangoria, like, the yeah, font, yes. the font, yes. great. Fangoria. Oh, so I was like, yeah. what the hell is this? I'm like, oh my gosh, this is you know because. It was kind of like the new generation. It was the scrappy, young, tough kid version of Famous Monsters in a way. It was and like the it, next generation, and, the new blood. And again, know? it was in color. Right. right. And right. it also came with a poster. Do you That's remember right. that? That's right. Yeah. Why was the decision to kind of like, you know, come out well, with this? Well, you know, in from the very... F- we started Starlog as kind of a general fan magazine, to be honest with you. We had fantasy. We had animation. We had horror. And I, we had Godzilla, I think, was uh, in, in an early issue of Starlog. Right, right. And, w- and we kept getting letters. Once again, and we, I read every letter that came into our office for years and years. 
Plus, I was beginning to get invited to fan conventions, which oh. were beginning to happen then. They were small right, groups. Right. It wasn't, you know, like Comic Con these days. <laughs> right, sure, right, right. 150,000 people. Right. But it was small gatherings, and I began to go because this was our audience, and I wanted to talk to them in person and see what they liked and what they didn't like. Yeah. And we found out that a lot of them were really into horror. Well, I was a sci-fi fan. I was not that much of a horror fan, although, you know, I, I liked horror, sure. but I wasn't, that wasn't my passion. But I said, you know, we need a separate magazine that just specializes in horror because that's a whole field unto itself. Yeah. And we said we first thought we would do a magazine that would be horror and fantasy. Mm-hmm. And our original title for it was Fantastica. <gasps> no! Okay. And I designed the logo, and let me tell you, it was a pretty fancy logo, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we got sued before we put it in that. We advertised it in Starlog and said, coming soon. Oh do you remember that, Sean? No, wow. I don't remember that. Well, <clears throat> I'll tell you, we got sued by a magazine called Fantastic Films. Oh. Yes, I, I have those issues. Yeah. That was yeah. kind of like a famous yeah. monster's yes, yes. Well, but, but, yeah, offshoot. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, was like, was like, more yeah. of a yeah. Starlog yeah. wannabe. Yeah. Kind of, that's, yeah. That's, yeah, I okay. agree. That's yeah. mainly what it was. But what they took us to court. And <gasps> wow. absolutely took us to court. And they said, you know, when magazines are displayed on a newsstand, you only see about the left hand oh, right. inch or two oh, of the okay. magazine. Okay. And you see F A N T. And they said, that's going to be confusing. Fantastica is going <laughs> to look like Fantastic Films. Right. Oh. And the court agreed, and they said we couldn't use that title. Oh, wow. So we thought, what do we do? What do we do? Well, I had come up with the word Starlog. Okay. And I liked the idea of creating our own word. Right. Not, right. Yeah. not just saying, you know, sci-fi monthly right. Right. or something <clears throat> like that. Yeah. I wanted a unique word. And we struggled to come up with a name for our monster magazine. And one weekend, uh, on a Monday, my partner came in and he said, I've got it. (laughs) He said, Fangoria. He said, it's got fan in it. It's got gore and it's got fang. (laughs) And I said, everything. Norman, I love it. And And fantasy. And and I created Starlog. Norman created Fangoria. That's awesome. Wow. And when Fangoria hit out of the gates, was that a hit too? Was that? Yes, because at that point, we had begun to gather our audience. Right. And we had a means of advertising whatever else we did. Whether right. it was a soundtrack album, whether it was a video production, whether it was a photo guidebook. Right. All the other playpen items that we started producing. Right. We were able to advertise it and promote it in our publications cross because we had gathered an audience <clears throat> that knew what to come to us for. Right, right. Well, it also seems to me like it took a few issues to get to where Fangoria finally rested. Well, oh, yeah. Kind of what yeah. it was well oh, yeah. known yeah. for. Right, right. Yeah, we, well, we, had to, we had to get editors that kind of got into it and, and, you know, instead of just saying, I said, do a horror magazine, instead of just doing what I told them to do, right, right. they kind of got into it themselves. And, and Tony Timpone was one of my first editors there and right. Bob Martin, and, and they kind of got into it and they ran with it. Well, and, by the time you got to that cover with like Fulci's zombie on the cover yeah. with, the, with the worms That's what you in knew. the eyes, like, <laughs> yes, we're on we're, our way. We're yeah. here. We're here. Okay. We have arrived. Okay, yeah, but yeah. I will, will say, so I, I was able to get a subscription to Fangoria, but, but later on down the road, Carrie, according to my mother, she felt that you crossed a line. <laughs> and this, someone asked you too, did you get, like, very, did you get pushback? They, from hang on, there's a very famous cover. <laughs> there's a picture from David Cronenberg's scanners where a guy has his head explode. <laughs> yes. And my mom saw that and she flipped out. Now my mom... Because I got a subscription to Famous Monster stuff, my mom would go through to make sure that there wasn't anything. Wow, really? you know, we talked about this on another show. <laughs> I know, but it still was, shocks no, us. It's still, your you know, mother only, proofreading okay, your magazine. Okay, lighten up here. Okay, now there was only one time when she tore two pictures out of a Famous Monsters magazine. Only one time. Tore. Okay. It, it, calm down. And there was pictures of the exorcist. Because, you know, I went to a private school, you know, Catholic family, that okay, kind of thing. All right. So, so, but I was able to get the Starlog. I was able to get the Fangor because Godzilla's on the cover. Hey, right. you know, but right, then, right. and then they got, got a little creepier, a little creeper. But that one, my mom, my mom, yeah, that great. That's great. 
of uh, someone showing the picture here. Yeah. But my mom flipped out. She goes, "You cannot get this magazine anymore." So I lost wow. the subscription. And I had to go under. You know, I had to go and get it myself, wow. like like a drug yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah, you know, and put them under the bed. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so. uh, what you I see? What I thought you should have done is you should have just taken those Fangoria magazines and just like copy and pasted like Red Book over the <laughs> title. All right. So and like just, a, yeah, a and your life. mother would have went, oh, I guess that's what Red oh, Book's doing yeah. now. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, gee, maybe I should have done that. So, oh, okay. so just an idea, just trying to help. Oh, so, well, Carrie, did you get like, you know, um, angry letters from like parents or teachers? You or must have. My I mean, mother? You must my have. mother? Did she? <laughs> your, your mother was not the only mother who hated <laughs> 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 From the office of Millicent Stroth. No, I, I, I got wonderful letters from our young readers. Right, right. From parents and teachers, I got dreadful letters. Oh, oh. Yeah. And, I, and I've saved a lot of them. I, nice. I, I, I can almost quote one I got from a teacher who said, I found one of my students reading your trashy Fangoria magazine hidden behind their textbook in class. <laughs> and I took it up in front of the classroom and I ripped it to shreds <gasps> wow, in front of gosh. the class so everyone could see it. And then I took those pieces home and I burned them in my fireplace. She said, Mr. <laughs> O'Quinn, <laughs> you are going to roast in hell. Whoa! Did you send I, her a thank you reply? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for your attention. No, I don't think my mom would have gone that far, though. <laughs> well, I, you know, we interviewed Brian Fuller for oh, this yeah, documentary yeah. that we're doing now about the growth of fandom mm -hmm. called From the Bridge. And Brian Fuller said that he loved Fangoria, but his parents wouldn't let him subscribe to it right so he had to subscribe at a friend's p.o box <gasps> and uh, <laughs> nice. and then each month he would go over there and get it from his friend and secretly Brilliant. read it right right but he said you know in those days it came in a brown wrapper yes mm -hmm. yeah. so that you couldn't see the cover and he said a lot of the post office people thought it was porno so he <laughs> right. said i got several of my fangori issues stolen by the postal delivery oh, people no oh, like, this oh, isn't oh, porn he said, he said, I, I would <laughs> love to have seen their faces you ruined my erection home. forever <laughs> 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 and they rip off the brown wrapping there's a man's and there's... head exploding that's not <laughs> sexy yeah. well i guess it's a different kind of porn yeah, somebody yeah, else yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I knew that like i knew like that i was in my element when i like some of your centerfolds there's one centerfold it's from the brood it's, oh. it's a centerfold it's a centerfold of samantha Enough said samantha edgar licking her the bloody fetus <laughs> sure right yeah and, what? And, what? and i put that what? up on my wall in my bedroom of course you, yeah. you put that up on your yes, wall I put all, the, all the centerfolds in my you wall are, dude you are messed up <laughs> i know your no, parents but, let you do that yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah they, my, they, they see, were supportive they i don't know care. about your parents but my parents see i had a brother and sister my brother is seven years from me, he's kind so of evil. I was, I was definitely the accident, <laughs> and, I, and so I think there was a little bit of like a little bit of checked outness when it came to raising me. So I, I think there was a couple times where my mom went into my room and saw some Black Sabbath albums and went, oh, and just <laughs> went upstairs again, you know. So your folks, and so Fangoria was was fine. So your right, folks right. retired; they were done. No, they, they were like, done. They were like, okay. See, when, with, with at me, least he's not rolling a joint out of that magazine. No, at least with me. <laughs> my, but I was. My mom, you know, my mom was kind of on top of it. You know, it, it was a little later when she started to get tired. It was ah, whatever. Yeah, yeah. you know. But that they that, get tired. Yeah, but, they but women get weary yeah. wearing that same old dress. Yeah. <laughs> that that that's, that just heightened the appeal of it, the, the forbidden aspect of it. You know, of the, course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, and again, another untapped audience for like people who who were into hardcore horror. Like I said, famous monsters to a point, but not like the new modern stuff, the bloody stuff. And again, behind the scenes stuff. Tom Savini. That's how I found out about Tom Savini. Yeah, you know, same here. He became right. like a rock star in, you know, in because Fangoria. of Fangoria. Oh, I know. I and know. that's what took it to a different level, too, where it wasn't just glorifying violent movies because you guys really got into the behind the scenes. It was the, the scenes, creativity. The makeup. There, right. oh, well, I, the creativity. I got a letter from a mother once who said, Mr. O'Quinn, my son goes down in the basement and mixes up fake blood. <laughs> <laughs> she said, you are turning 
take the youth of America into serial killers. <laughs> and I thought, that mother does not understand what her son is doing down in the basement and why he loves that. Right, and right. it has nothing to do with him wanting to go out and kill people. Right. He right. wants to go out and make movies like Rick Baker and Tom Savini and right. Dick yeah. Smith and sure. all the rest of them. Right. I, I, had a jar, I had a glass jar filled with fake blood in our fridge. Well, the, out, the garage fridge. That was the rule. <laughs> As it, it, couldn't, it couldn't be in the, the regular fridge in the house. But that I you made? It. Yeah, I made oh, wow. it. No, wow. Yeah, yeah. I, out of the caro syrup. This caro syrup. And, yeah, yeah. Oh, from, oh, yeah. yeah. I, I, great. I, I made my whole batch, and it was a little thick. It was a little thicker, I think, <laughs> than, nor- than normal. But but you know, it worked when I made my little my little horror film. That's great. Oh, I love that. Well, I, I even got I even got letters from parents on Starlog too. Really? Uh, whoa, yeah. whoa, really? Uh, yeah. I'm, Those spaceships uh, are too phallic. One, no, no, no. <laughs> one, one mother wrote me, she said, my son is six years old and he's going around the house with this Darth Vader helmet on and he's breathing real heavy. <laughs> she said, you have made him admire this horrible person. And and I thought, you know, she doesn't understand right, that right. Darth Vader is the grandest villain in the whole universe. Right. Yeah. I mean, He's this, a fantasy character. If you're going to be evil, go right to the top. Exactly. <laughs> right, right. Go for the big stuff. Yeah. Right. And, and, you know, I said, he'll grow out of that. He'll learn what heroes are all about, and he'll want to be, you right, know, right. Luke Skywalker someday. But right now, that's so cool. Yeah. You can't have a hero without a villain anyway. Exactly. Right. And also, don't judge. For we know the whole <laughs> Darth Vader story. Well, yeah, but he's right. redeemed he, at the end. But, but yeah. here, here's so, the thing. On. No, no. But but if, after the second film, Empire, I mean, you're thinking bad dude all the way. Oh, you yeah. know, right, so right, I, I right. get it. I, re- I remember, check this out. I remember... Three weeks after Star Wars had come out, okay? Three weeks, okay? I've seen it for my fourth time, okay? (laughs) And I was with the packed audience. And when Darth Vader first comes out, dun, 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 you know, and he's looking down and you, the audience went, boo. And after it went out, one guy goes, Yay! And people like, <laughs> and I remember being pissed off at the guy. Went, who the hell is that guy that said oh, gay? Come on, that's that, that was funny. Matt. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Finally, someone that understands me. <laughs> Carrie, did you ever answer any of these letters? Were you ever compelled to actually address some of um, these? I think once in a while I would put one in the magazine itself. You know, we had a big letters section. Right, yeah. right. And, and again, that was a way for people to connect with other fans and know that, oh, here's a letter from someone else in, you know, Des Moines or whatever. <laughs> and uh, so we ran a lot of letters in all of our fan magazines. And sometimes I would put a real negative one in there and then I would do a little reply to it. Right. But mainly I did my own voice in the column that opened each issue of Starlog, my column was called From the Bridge, right. mm-hmm. which is also the title of the documentary that we're doing now. From the Bridge. From bridge. the Bridge. Great title. And for yeah. 20-some-odd years, I started each issue of Starlog and Cinemagic mm-hmm. and Future Life, mm-hmm. right. our, our like too. science and yep. space magazine, yeah. Yeah. with a column that I wrote uh, basically talking about things that I was doing in my life and adventures I'd had and things that were in the issue of, you know, that you should pay attention to right. yeah. <clears throat> and things that kind of encouraged our young readers to, you know, make their dreams come true and uh, you can do it too. Yeah. And, and lo and behold, I found out when I got out here to California years ago that uh, a lot of people had actually read my editorials and it mattered to them. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Well, I, I, you know, I, I love Starlog, you know, Cinemagic, Fangoria. So I, at this time, I, I had like four subscriptions going. Future Life, maybe a little, it was maybe a little too scientific for me at the time. A little over yeah. your head? It was science fact. Yeah, yeah, yeah you yeah, know. Too yeah, grounded yeah. in reality. Yes. So that, yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. let's let's poke fun at Larry. Yes. Yes. Oh, no, 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 no. A little, you know. Can't, yeah, it was a little. He, it was a little. Yes. You can't take reality. He's, no, no, he I'm. Doesn't, totally he doesn't do well fine. in it. I'm not oh, poking fun. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm, I'm like poking fun. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. So you had a subscription to Future Life. I see. <laughs> really. But I like the fact that that you guys also covered that area too. Like there's Omni Magazine, you know, and right. but like but like that was also a viable audience to go well, after for a while. Once again, that one. What we discovered was that when we would do articles in Starlog about, you know, the space program and NASA and stuff like that had something to do with that, we got tremendous response. We said there's people that are actually interested in real 
space exploration and science right. and you know the right. the world of tomorrow for real and so we started future life and omni started about the same time right. so we were kind of competitive magazines dealing future with future life was a little more grounded though actually oh, in reality oh, or absolutely yeah, it was yeah, totally yeah. grounded it, yeah my, omni got into weird areas that were a little uh i was always kind of a pseudo science oh, omni yeah. was published yeah, by bob true. guccione from penthouse yeah that's true what's yeah. the connection that's weird but yeah um but speaking of competitors because when fangoria hit Famous Monsters was still going on. So I always wondered if there was any kind of rivalry with, you know, Fourier and Famous Monsters, or was it a friendly rivalry, or did you guys kind of respect each other? Like, how did that work out? There, there was no real rivalry. I mean, we were doing our thing, and he had done his for years. Right. I mean, Fourier mm -hmm. was a trailblazer. He, he basically started the field that I jumped into and right. did my own thing mm -hmm. in. And I met Forey eventually and came out here, saw the old Acker Mansion, and, mm -hmm. yeah, and yeah. we became wonderful friends. And in fact, I was with Forey just literally a couple of days before he died. Oh, I was that right? Wow. wow. He was very uh, a dear friend to me and very important. And uh, we had no kind of serious rival. We cheered each other on. Right. Yeah, it seemed uh, like there's enough, there was enough room in this world for, for both magazines absolutely. easily. Well, I, right. I would think you would be a little bit more annoyed when it came to other magazines after you that kind of... Uh, I mean, there were so many. Well, like I said, we brought up fantastic films, but there yeah. was also well, Space Wars. Well, actually, and, and, you know, the funny thing is I actually brought some, Matt, because, Carrie, uh, seriously, at the time when, when Matt and I were, oh. were at the stage, anything we could get was science sure. fiction. I mean, I right, actually right. got, look, Star Battles. Oh, Star Battles. Star yeah. Battles yeah. and Science Fantasy <laughs> Film Classics. Wow. I mean, wow. Yeah, I that fantastic yeah. films. I mean, I, I mean, I got all of these magazines. And they're the, all Starlog. The, you know, they, <laughs> we're trying to be. Well, right. the funny thing is, what I what I learned, Carrie, it cost a few bucks, but it's like all of these were like they were like copycats. You know, they're trying to right, they right. are trying to copy what you were doing. Okay, and so I, I I got maybe a few issues of these other ones, but I just kind of put them by the by the side. And, and Starlog uh, was always my go to space log. <laughs> some of them, let's be honest, some of them were not trying very hard either. No, some right, of these no. things right. are awful and really funny to read. Sometimes, like, <laughs> right, right. Yes. Well, well, also, like in this one, just to let you know, in Star Battles, okay, you got this great cover, but it's all black and white. There's no, uh, there's right, no color, right. you mm -hmm. know. But I thought, oh, well, you know, hey, it's got Superman on the cover, and it's got an article on ISIS. You know, we liked cool. ISIS. Remember cool. we talked about that. So, <laughs> and um, then, but yeah, later on with comic books, kind of finding their golden age in like the '80s. With conventions. With conventions and, right. you know, the popularity of Alan Moore. Right. Uh, there was sort of... Frank Miller. Frank Miller. There was a resurgence in the popularity of, of more adult-leaning comics. And where does comic scene fit into that? Well, once again, we had done things in Starlog and, in fact, in Fangoria that dealt with comic characters that had to do with science fiction sure. and horror. And once again, we got responses that said, you know, more, more of that. I mean... Of course, one of my favorites was the original Flash Gordon comic strips from oh, yeah. the yeah. newspapers oh, yeah. that had been. Right. I didn't, I was too, uh, you know, that was before my day. Sure. So <laughs> I hadn't seen them in the newspapers, but they had been collected into hardback books. Yes. And right. I still have those books. <gasps> I, I loved the, uh, the, the beautiful artwork for Flash Gordon that was done by Alex Raymond. Oh, yes. oh, he was yes. one of the great artists of all categories and so that was very impressive to me and we did a major feature in Starlog once on Flash Gordon and people nice. loved it mm -hmm. they said more more comic <laughs> stuff yeah so once again we started comic scene mm -hmm. you know and we covered the comics world too and I got people in there to mm -hmm. work on that magazine yeah. who later went over and worked for DC and all that all the artists uh, of the day anybody yeah, yeah. who was yeah. hot at that moment was at some point featured in that magazine oh yeah and and once again it's kind of like if it's not broke don't fix it with the attention to you know the process what it takes to write a story what it takes to draw a story preliminary sketches a lot of things that you exactly. don't see yeah and uh the i really appreciated that magazine it. yeah as a, as a well, comic book we fan we did some animation there too oh you know? yes. yeah. So yeah that it was it's all about you know stories as told through art yeah mm -hmm. Uh, and Carrie, you had mentioned earlier about conventions. You know, as conventions like in the late 70s, early 80s started to kind of take off more and become bigger events and more elaborate things, you actually organized 
um, some conventions, right? Well, what I did was I knew that creation conventions, Adam and Gary were doing these conventions. They had been staging them uh, for years, and I'd been a guest at some of the conventions right. and everything. Mm-hmm. So we got together at one point, and we'd become friends, and we got together and said, what if we did a Starlog convention? And we talked about it and decided that would be a good idea, that we'd try to do it and just do a convention that was kind of based around Starlog. And we would bring in some people that, you know, were connected with the magazine. Maybe some David Gerald was oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. for us. Yeah. And right. we, we had various people that were kind of connected with the magazine. So we did that. And then we'd said, let's do a Fangoria Weekend of Horrors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I came up with that title, and we did Weekend of Horrors, and we did several of those. And then when the 20th anniversary of Star Trek came along, oh, yeah. Creation and Starlog teamed up to do a celebration of the 20th anniversary of Star Trek at Disneyland, oh, at wow. the Disneyland Hotel. Okay, okay. Oh. Wow. And, uh, and we did that, and... Uh, at that particular event, some of my friends from Lucasfilm came down, and they, I had invited them, and they came, and they were astounded. They said, good Lord, there's like thousands of people here. I mean, I had Gene Roddenberry there and Leonard Nimoy. I had the whole crew. Yeah. Wow. And they were amazed, and I said, guys, <laughs> guess what? <laughs> this goes on every weekend somewhere. You've never had a Star Wars convention? They said, no, but Carrie, next year is the 10th anniversary of Star Wars. Wow. Oh. And I said, all right, I will produce a huge convention. It will be a major success. All the press will be there. I mean, it will be gigantic. But I said, it'll be a celebration of George, and he has to be on stage. And Lynn said, no, I'm Carrie, that's not going to happen. George doesn't do fan conventions. Yeah, well, yeah. And yeah. Uh, I said, Lynn, ask George Tell him Carrie said he's going to produce it. Oh, and, really? That's oh, going to yeah. work. Tell him Carrie <laughs> said. Okay. Uh, that's right. All right. All right. Because, because a few years earlier, when we were getting ready yes. for the fifth anniversary issue of Starlog, yeah. I wanted an interview with George Lucas there. I thought that would be the greatest thing to celebrate issue number, f- the fifth anniversary. Right. Mm-hmm. And again, I called his, uh, I called his assistant, Jane Bay, and mm-hmm. said... Uh, can I get an interview with George Lucas? She said, no, George is not doing interviews. And I said, no, this is for Starlog. It's it's real. She said, uh, Carrie, he's already turned down Fortune magazine. He's turned down People magazine. <laughs> he's, he's turned down all the, he's not going to do it. Penthouse. Magazine. He's turned down. Everything. I said, all people Field are interested stream. in is, is how much money the movie is making. And I said, that's not what I'm interested in. I said, tell him that the publisher is going to fly out there and do the interview himself. She said, all right. (laughs) She called me back the next day, and she said, I can't believe it. George said yes. Really? You can have one hour with him. Mm -hmm. So I flew out to California. This is before he built the ranch. Sure. And uh, George and I sat down, and we started talking, and we just hit it off like crazy. Really? We had so much in common. I mean, everything from... The space program to classic cars. Uh Uh, And we just started talking, and we ended up talking for three and a half hours. Nice. And I recorded and wrote the longest interview that has ever been done with George Lucas. It's in a book of of George Lucas interviews, and it's the longest one in the book. Wow. And and wasn't the interview across three issues of Starlog, right? Eventually, we put it into three (laughs) separate issues. It started with the fifth anniversary and then went for the next. And each one I did like his movies, you know. The first movie was called (laughs) A New Hope. (laughs) (laughs) Nice, nice. The interview strikes back. (laughs) No, I called. The first one was called A New View. Oh, and it, it was right. it was a, a look at George Lucas that you had never seen. Right, uh-huh. right. That's awesome. And the second one was called The Box Office Strikes Back. Oh. <laughs> nice. okay. And in each one I did right, kind right. of... And the third like one was history. Return of the Muppets. <laughs> <laughs> no? <laughs> okay. That's no, awesome. I, no? I, that's really cool. Well, well, I, my hat is off to you, sir. Yeah. For, uh, uh, seriously, that is... I, I'm not, you know, uh, yanking your chain here. No, my hat is off to you. That is, that is amazing. And just so I understand this so he did the interview but did he appear at this convention oh absolutely and oh, are did, you serious? did he give you more than an hour well <laughs> the the convention the the final night was sure. 
on a Sunday night, mm-hmm. and it was here in L.A. Okay. And I wrote a script for that evening, and I had R2-D2 and C-3PO <laughs> come out on stage to begin with. Nice. Uh-huh. And they did, they did a kind of a stand-up routine. It's hard to follow them. Awesome. <laughs> a, little, a little banter. They were, they yeah, were yeah. like <laughs> Mutt and Jeff, you know, you know like <laughs> Abbott and Costello. They were doing – and Tony Daniels – actually came from London. Got Are you Oh, my serious? God, wow. Yeah. He That's, was C-3PO. You're oh kidding. Gosh. Was yeah. Kenny awesome. Baker inside? Yeah, the no, no, Kenny no. Baker was not. It was <laughs> remote he, control. He's all, I'm not working with that. No, <laughs> Never <laughs> again. <laughs> they, they did this very, very funny routine, and then, in a cloud of smoke, on came Darth Vader. <laughs> nice. And I had actually... Uh, James Earl Jones, who was the voice of Darth oh, Vader, yeah. was doing a show in New York on Broadway called Fences at the time. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I waited. I went to see the show one matinee, and I waited outside the the uh, you know the door, uh-huh. the, the stage door. And when he came out, I said, uh, "Mr. Jones, uh, <laughs> 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 my name is Kerry O'Quinn." Were you sixteen at the time? <laughs> <laughs> I felt like it. I mean, here was the man. Yeah. It was Darth yeah, Vader. Yeah. And I said, I'm doing this tribute to George Lucas, and I, 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 could you possibly go into a recording studio and, re- and do the voice of this script, that I, the crazy script I've written? He said, sure. What? Oh, so a week later, I went into a recording studio in New York with James Earl Jones, and what? I directed him <laughs> wow. reading this crazy script. Oh, where the first thing he does, he comes out on stage, he looks at the audience, which was Thousands mm-hmm. of people. Yeah. Half of them were Princess Leia. Half of them were Stormtroopers. <laughs> sure. uh-huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, yeah. And he said, never have I seen a more wretched <laughs> hive of scum and villainy. <laughs> I <laughs> like you. <laughs> <laughs> but why wasn't I invited? Oh. <laughs> so, and and I did the, he did this funny routine that That's I wrote. Awesome. Wow. And, and Tony Daniels worked with me on the script, too, because he said, Carrie, I think I can help you with... 3PO's dialogue a little bit. Right, said, right. I know how he talks now, perhaps even better than George does. Okay. <laughs> right, yeah, right. I believe that. Yeah. So, uh, Don't tell George that. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. But Tony helped me with the script, so we wrote the script together. And yes. when George mm-hmm. came out on stage, the audience went crazy they screamed and applauded for more than 10 minutes and george who <laughs> frankly doesn't know how to deal with a crowd very right yeah, 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 yeah. yeah trust yeah. me we know yeah. we know yeah. we've been there yeah. Yeah. yeah and he just stood there and waited and finally the audience <laughs> said he's not going to say anything until we shut up <laughs> right. and finally they stopped and he said hi <laughs> Carrie, and somebody going to help me out here? <laughs> <laughs> did he did he subtract the applause from his hour, hour that yeah. he was contracted <laughs> no, no, no. to do? Yeah. The hour he gave me was for the interview. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, okay. So this was just uh, as long as he wanted to go. The oh, live yeah. event. It was yeah. just, right, uh, right. We, we, I took questions from the audience. Okay, right, okay. Right. And he answered questions. Wow. Wow. And, uh, Wasn't there a time is it was this one because roddenberry was also at one of these i didn't tell george but i had invited my friend gene roddenberry your friend gene roddenberry gene and i were good friends we we were both born in texas we both had the same birthday Mm -hmm. and we when we met and discovered that we just said we're soulmates that's Mm -hmm. great and uh and so i invited gene i mean the the stage was full of people that night billy d williams was there mark hamill was there sid gannis was there irv kirshner was there b arthur (laughs) (laughs) the crowd would have went nuts i know you know hey christmas special 10 minutes of applauding (laughs) it was it was quite a interesting bunch that night on stage yeah. and Gene Roddenberry came out and shook hands with George Lucas wow. for the one and only time they ever met. Oh my gosh. And, uh, That's pretty, I would, it's amazing. I, I don't know if I've ever, have, I take I it there were, I've, I, seen, I've seen a picture. I haven't seen a picture. There should of that. be a statue. Did you, did you throw in front a picture of, of that? In I, the, saw, in the I saw a picture online actually of it. Yeah, of them shaking hands. Okay, yeah. I don't know if I've ever seen that. That's, that is cool. Well, in, in the documentary from the bridge, yeah. you're going to see a little video that a girl in the audience yeah. took. Nice. Wow. The stupidest thing I ever did in my life was not professionally videotaped that evening. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Why I didn't know that that was a historic moment, yeah. Yeah. What, I don't you, know. You had a lot going on. So I, yeah, I, yeah. I, mean, yeah. so I can imagine. You got so, a lot yeah. of other things to work so, that yeah. Yeah. You had yeah. these two giants come and they shake hands and Gene leans over and says, Star Trek's better. Right, is that, <laughs> no. no? What Gene actually said was, he said, when I first saw Star Wars, I thought, 
I wish I'd done that. <laughs> ah, and really? then he said, yeah. I realized I couldn't have done that. That's George's thing. Right, yeah. right. So yeah. he said, there's a lesson in this for all of you out there. Do your own thing. Do and I thought, your that's, own that's thing. Gene. What a class act. I know. Yeah, I, he, Gene was always philosophical, and that's one of the reasons we got along. That's awesome. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. And so you've got this Star Wars. Now, did you do other, aside from the Weekend of Horrors and the Starlog ones, were there other, was there comic book conventions too? We just, no. Uh, we just did mainly Weekend of Horrors. That mm. became one of the most yeah. popular. Yeah, that was I love that show. That was yeah. a great show. Yeah, I have to yeah. tell you, one of my favorite, I, I mean, I went to, my, actually, my first uh, Fangoria Weekend of Horror, and I was able to meet all of the folks from the original classic Night of the Living Dead. Yeah. I mean, oh, wow. that was magical to me. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Judith O'Day, I, I, I mean, I got to meet all of them, and I'm like, uh, and I actually got uh, uh, Russ Steiner to put, they're coming to get you, Barbara, yeah, and then I yeah. had her put, Johnny, stop it. You know, and I, even, it was, even the actor who played the sheriff. That's right, he was there. <laughs> awesome. Oh, my God, it was it was shoot so him in the head. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> exactly. awesome. But that was such a great convention. So well, we we did quite a few of them yeah. here and there in different places. Mm. The one we actually videotaped because a, a fan convention had never been recorded That's by true. a professional crew. Right. And I guess my experience with the Star Wars thing kind of said, Carrie, don't be stupid the rest of your life. You know, <laughs> uh, you, we had a big convention, a Fangoria Weekend of Horrors, that was going to be at the Ambassador Hotel, the famous classic hotel here in L.A. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had everybody there because, you know, suddenly we're out here in L.A. and this is where all our people were. Right, right. This is where mm -hmm. the whole movie industry was. So, it, well, you know, if we did a convention in New York, we got whoever happened to be there or whoever right. would yeah. fly right. into town yeah. or something. Right. But here we had everybody, including it was Forey Ackerman's birthday. Yeah. Oh, and, yeah. right. and we had George Romero. We had Toby Hooper. We had Robert England. We had oh, Elvira. Mm. You know, on and on. We had this list of mm. stars. And it was huge. And I said, we're going to videotape this. So I got a bunch of cameramen, oh. and I told them, you know, what was going to be going on and to do everything that mm -hmm. they could. And lo and behold, they recorded the whole thing, and I directed the video and did some of the music for it and put it together so that it, uh, you know, it, we have a one-hour show called Fangoria's Weekend of Horrors. Was that uh, released on VHS at the time or something? Because I remember that. Yes. yes. I yes. Now, is it on DVD? Well, Blu -ray. I, actually, <laughs> when I was at Monster Palooza with you guys last weekend, yeah. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I, I saw a dealer there who had the DVD version, and he said, you're the guy who made this possible. He said, you get a free copy. So I now have it on. Please don't have me arrested. <laughs> was, it boot, was it bootlegged or was it? No, it's no, no, real. No. no, it was real. No, it's beautiful. Legend. It was real. Okay. 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 Right. Right. It's, 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 a, it's a beautiful package. They changed the cover from what we had originally. They kind of featured Elvira on right. it. Sure. Okay. Right. Sean, right. do you have that? I don't know if I do. I okay, Sean, uh, has, get that. Sean has like yeah. the most amazing DVD collection. I, I, I'm surprised I, I, you don't have yeah, that. I know, We've got to find this. Yeah. Well, it is out. I mean, awesome. it, it's out there somewhere. And that's really that really shows. Do you get a taste if we buy this? Do do you get a little taste of the profits? Yeah. Do you get a <laughs> no. you know piece? Can we no. just give you? Should we give you some money now yeah. or a couple bucks? <laughs> I, I you want another Diet Coke? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I sold the company years ago. I have I don't okay. have anything yeah. to do with it financially now. I'm certainly wishing uh, the new owner of Starlog and Fangoria and well. Uh, you know all the best. Well, Karen, yeah, what, yeah. So what? So what happened? Yeah, what, towards, yeah that's yeah. what I want to know. I we mean, mag I, magazines I, into the late eighties, nineties, now. Like, you know what? What changed? What started to I change? Mean, I, what, I, what can you tell I us? I mean, I had yeah. to pay for college and things like that, so I wasn't able to spend money on magazines as much. As I, is it? Is it my fault? I mean, yes. I mean, <laughs> yes. My, no, my lack no, of social no. rhetorical question. <laughs> the the world of tomorrow changes things. I mean. You know, when Star Trek came out in the 60s, you remember the communicator that Captain Kirk had? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah that's oh. a little flip phone. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That was, we didn't have such a thing as cell phones then. Yeah. That was their way of talking to each other. Our cell phones now are smarter than the communicators were, and that was, <laughs> Gene Roddenberry was predicting those for the 23rd century. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. So the world of tomorrow uh, has moved much faster than I ever expected to. And I'm right. now, I'm happy to say, living in the world of tomorrow. Right. Yeah. And one of the things that has happened is the internet. And that has basically replaced magazines to a huge degree. Right. 
there are no uh, newsstands on the streets the way they used to be, those huge yeah, newsstands. Right. Everywhere, yeah. Yeah. Half yeah. a block yeah. long. Barnes & Noble had magazines mm-hmm. and Walden Books and all these. Oh, yeah. You Walden know, Bus. they had huge magazines. That's where we sold our magazines. Yeah. Well, you don't do that anymore. Yeah. I mean, there may be a few, but it's just not what it used to be. So mm-hmm. the guy who has bought the magazine titles now and plans to bring Fangoria <gasps> back to life really? as a published magazine. Oh, man. Yeah. Be, wow. The first issue, by the way, is scheduled to be out Halloween. <gasps> nice. Awesome. This year. Awesome. For 2018. Right. October 2018. Fangoria now. is back. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm also planning to write an article for that first issue of the magazine nice. about the uh feature documentary that we're finishing post-production on right now mm. awesome. that's great so you have a nice relationship with them you're i yeah. went up to dallas and i met him his name also happens to be dallas <laughs> oh, wow. he has an entertainment company based there that i was very impressed with they've made quite a few movies they produced movies they've published some books mm. and now he's in the magazine business and he he thinks he's going to make this work again as a magazine and I think he might very well be successful at it because it's going to be like a collector's item. Right. And I think it'll mainly sell by subscription. Uh-huh. Okay. And I think people will want it because it is a unique item. Well, you've got four collectors here. So, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and by the way, if you could put in a good word. Yeah. Uh, you know, Monster Party, yeah. you know, are pretty good. You know, yeah. monsters. Hey. We, uh, we, the previous incarnation of uh, Fangoria. They had a podcast network, and we were yes. one of their first podcasts. Right? Yes, we and were right. their and so we're, is there, What uh, I'm trying to say is that we're, <laughs> our phones still work, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we're ready available. to hear offers. Yes. I mean, we haven't yes. stopped. We're we're moving forward, but right. you know, if they want to come knocking, you know, hey, we'll, we'll listen. Just like Gene Roddenberry, we're heading towards the future. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and just just one last thing uh, uh, that future. Hopefully, life, more than one. No, last no, thing. no, no, no. I, I just want to say, look, look. Years ago. Future life wasn't really my thing, but I love space stuff, real stuff, space stuff now. So I mean, it's Me too. I, I would have to go back to those and I and I'd read them yeah, now. Yeah. So so I love space and going to Mars and I love all that stuff now. It just I wasn't ready for it at the time. <laughs> well, and the thing I loved about it was we did two art sections in every issue of Future Life. Mm-hmm. We had a centerfold, which was not a girl, but was a, a space, <laughs> space illustration painting. of some sort. Sexy space. And then in the back, we featured several pages about a uh, an astronomical illustrator. Oh, right. Like Chelsea. Yeah. Like it, it, yeah. Well, just, there were some wonderful people. I got to know all of these people very well. Right. We bought a lot of their original artwork, and I still <gasps> have some of it. And <gasps> you have original artwork? Yes. <laughs> well, I have artwork by Chesley Bonnister. <gasps> I love his stuff. I came this close. His I centerfolds got to, I, are great. No, no, it's all space paintings. You know, yes. I came this close to. I was bidding on a beautiful paint, painting that. He, well, it was small, but it was a lot of money. It's like, oh, so out of my reach. What well, but Bonnister is the artist. Who worked with George Powell on Destination, Destination Moon? Yeah, yeah. One of the greatest His moonscapes one of the first, are so yeah, cool. The, yes. The, yeah. The, the spaceship launch and when worlds collide, the yes. one that went down the ramp and yep. then yeah. took off. Mm hmm. He designed all of that sort of thing. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, Where's that ride? Doesn't that look like a ride? It should be a ride. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what? I, I would ride. imagine there was kind of a ride at at the in, at Disneyland in the early days. They're they're oh, they're yes. to Mars yeah, or yeah. something yeah, like that. Yeah. But, you know, Mars. It actually made people some people sick, and they had to tone it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Right, right. You know. Always the case. Mm-hmm. Carrie, will will Starlog be coming back as well? Well, uh, Dallas hopes t- if if Fangoria is successful as a magazine. He wants to, maybe a few months later, maybe a year later, to bring back Starlog as a magazine also. Right, right. Now, I always thought of all the magazines that we produced, and we were publishing two dozen monthly newsstand magazines at our peak. Wow. Uh, we, we were remiss- What, are, what are some of the other one of those? Yeah, that, uh, yeah name, give us a list of some of those <laughs> magazines. Female wrestling. Oh, <laughs> are you kidding? You did I, female I, wrestling? I had a subscription to that. <laughs> did, yes. did you really? Oh, of course. Did you really? Yeah. Female we did a lot wrestling. of magazines that I had no particular involvement in or personal interest in. All right, in. but let's hear them. Come on. <laughs> okay, so female wrestling. Teen Idols. Okay, All right. Okay, sure, All right. Sure. That works. Yeah. That works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Black elegance. Oh, no. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, this was. This this was you're hitting every facet sure. of yeah. Yeah, well, pop culture. I right. mean, there was uh, country rhythms. 
country yeah. music. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 It was yeah. a I've, fan I've heard magazine of it. for country music. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Why not? Well, we had we had quite a few. <laughs> I mean, on and on. Cool, yeah. cool. Now, Carrie, what would you say? Like, how has fandom changed today compared to when you know Starlight was coming out? I mean, how you know just how, the, the world of fandom. What do you now. like? What do you dislike? Well, I mean, th- they're still fans, but fans have come out of the closet big time. Right, right. Mm, I that's mean, for sure. When, when we started Starlog, uh, Star Trek fans didn't want to be called Trekkies. That, oh was, that was kind of an insult. You could never right. satisfy them. That was, right. that was using, <laughs> right. that was the T word. Well, right. I, right, you know, right. Yeah, I thought it was kind of, you know, derogatory. Exactly. You know? But I, I grew to like it. Okay. I grew to like it, well, okay? Now, now you were like a bad Are you a, Were you a Trekker right. person? I didn't think of myself you're, that you're way. You're a Trekoid. Oh, you guys. <laughs> I was a Trekist. Well, but, I was a Star Trek fan. Okay. okay. But the whole... The whole gist of this feature film, I mean, this documentary we're doing, is about the growth of fandom in the last four decades Mm -hmm. and how fans have come from being this invisible audience that was almost embarrassed to be a geek, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to now being one of the largest, the most desirable, and the most powerful audiences on the planet. Yes. Yes. I mean, look at the Avengers that's about to come out this summer. It's probably, look at Black Panther. These movies just blow box office records away. Yeah. And they keep doing it. Because the audience is so powerful and visible at this point. Right. And that's what's happened to fandom. And I, you know, Frankly, what this movie is about is the role that my magazines and my other productions have had in creating this audience and making it visible and bringing the nerds of the world out of the closet. That's you all right with nerds, Larry? You okay with that? <laughs> <sighs> well, really? you know, no satisfying you know, this guy. I, I, you know, look, it's 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 kind of like what Sean said. I'm a dork. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Come on. But it's true. It's like ner- nerds rule the world now. Nerds are making the big exactly. movies. Yeah. Nerds are. It's you know. cool to be a nerd. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. And what people fail to recognize too is that when people talk shit about you know the big blockbuster science fiction or comic book movies, what they fail to see is all the imagination and just ingenuity that goes into those movies. There are things that you have to think about for a movie like Guardians of the Galaxy that you would never have to, no. you know, work out when it came to, right, I don't know, right. a Woody Allen movie. Who would have yeah. Who would have <laughs> thought a talking raccoon would be so cool and, and fun so to popular. watch? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right. Well, it had to be done right. It had to be done right, yeah. yeah. It, it could have, yeah. that could have been Howard the Duck. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Oh, right. yeah. 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 Good, <laughs> yes, yes. Good point, Easily, sir. yeah. Good point, sure. sir. In lesser hands, yes. yeah. Right. Well, well, my theory on all of this, and this is kind of a summary statement from me in a way, but the, the fact is that the geeks and the nerds and the fans of the world are the human beings with unique souls. These are the people who don't travel in the mundane lane, <laughs> who don't join the herd and become like everybody else. Mm-hmm. Right. They are individuals with unique values, mm-hmm. unique interests, and unique dreams. And this is why I am a fan, and this is why I love that audience, because they are the people that will create the change and the progress in our world. And more power to them. I've encouraged them through my magazines and all the other stuff I've done. And lo and behold, they have come out big time, and I think we have some very exciting things ahead of us in our world because of the humans with unique souls, the fans of the planet Earth. Yeah. Nicely wow, said. Wow, that is really yes. nicely said. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there's something to be said about people who go throughout their lives with a sense of wonder. Yeah. That's yeah. active yeah. till the end of their days. Right, and it's right. it's encouraging that there are so many unique souls out there now. I mean we mm. see thousands of them at comic con you can barely yep. move yeah. it's right, it's a right. movement and it's, yeah, yeah. it's not going to stop i mean this right. this is the future <clears throat> right yeah, they're, is, yeah they're strange and they're weird but, <laughs> but, but, but these are the explorers <laughs> right, right you know who yeah. don't just do what you're supposed to do right right they do stuff that you maybe shouldn't do they step outside the bounds they ask questions that's right they move right. forward but you're always going to get that type of fan because the minute something becomes popular the, the minute it becomes mainstream, then there's the other side who 
go, oh, you know, that's so mainstream. I don't want to have anything to do with that. And what usually comes from that is someone then turning that thing on its ear and doing something new and different. I would cite a show like Legion that's uh, on FX yeah, that uh, takes the superhero show and makes it into almost this psychedelic realm Surreal, of the mind. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it is true. Like, there's so much, there's stuff on television now and there's movies that are really like going in unique directions that stuff that you've never seen before but you, you know, know, you know in, in the genre of horror and sci-fi it's true and, and matt has brought this up before i mean carrie if you think about it right now we are living in a golden age yeah, oh, yeah. when we were kids we were, you know we, were, we wanted this stuff so much and we got a star wars here we got a logan's run or something yeah we but, clamored after over anything that but we could now but, yeah now it's like oh my gosh i mean yeah. you know, and the kids today they don't realize how lucky they are but because when we were younger, I mean, we had to, we were just anything, even the worst right. stuff we would g- get into. But right. now it's a yeah. golden age. Small wonder. <laughs> a sitcom yeah. about a robot girl. <laughs> right. And we, and we wanted more. <laughs> right, right. Well, and it's come to television, too. I mean, it used yeah. to be that all the, all the money and all the talent was mm-hmm. put into, you know, big movies. Mm-hmm. But now look at the quality of oh, work. They're like many movies. Television. That's yeah. a really it's good It's like point. movie yeah. quality. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's, yeah. yeah. It's incredible. A very a low-budget mm-hmm. film can get a big movie look to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Well, fairly um, easily. Carrie, tell us, so the movie From the Bridge, is this still being made? Like, is It's there being... in post-production now. We have okay. a distribution deal, and it, it'll be finished and released theatrically uh, around the end of the summer. We will have, I, I'm going to some conventions uh, in the next few months, and mm-hmm. we'll have a little sizzle reel that we'll show there, and nice. some Q&As with different people that are in the movie. We've, we've interviewed more than 30 amazing people for this movie stan lee is interviewed awesome and uh nichelle nichols george takei is our host for the show oh, oh, awesome. Hey. he's a great and guy he's uh, you know and it's just it, it's an amazing bunch of people that we've interviewed for this great and uh so they're people that have lived through the last few decades and have seen the growth of fandom and have something very personal to say about it. Mm-hmm. Right. And uh, so it, 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 the movie is, we're going to have a screening at uh, Comic-Con in San Diego. Oh. We'll, we'll be there. We'll be there. Yeah, yeah we'll yeah. be there. Well, Monster Party yeah. will be in the house. <laughs> well, come, come find out when From the Bridge is, is showing. Okay, yeah. Uh, I don't think we're going to show the whole movie there. I yeah, think yeah. we're going to show a, a piece of it, but right. there'll be a lot of people there who are in the movie, and so awesome. we'll have a good Q&A panel awesome that sounds great now do you have any plans for anything online some some new platform yeah a new platform or a new type of vehicle for entertainment or type of entertainment holodeck maybe yeah i've i've graduated i've done i've done the publisher thing now i my resume looks schizophrenic because (laughs) you you gave me a lovely introduction the one thing you said that was incorrect in that introduction Uh was that i was a novelist and oh, I thought he had written a book. I, I have written a book, but it's nonfiction. Oh, okay, okay. It, nice one. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. Cut that out. I'm so sorry, Kerry. It, it's called He's Re- new. Reach for the Stars, and it is basically what JJ and a lot of people told me I should collect a lot of my From the Bridge editorials that I wrote over oh. so many years and put them together in a book. And I said, no, 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 I don't want to do that. But I've written the book from scratch, and it's a step-by-step guide to making your dreams come true and how you can do the distant things that are beyond your reach. And I also am including in the book uh, words on success and advice and encouragement from more than a dozen famous people who have become successful and who Mm -hmm. have something to say about it, including friends like Gene Roddenberry and Arthur C. Clarke, who are no longer with us. But I have things that I recorded from them wow. years ago uh, that are on this very topic. Leonard Nimoy, uh, some wonderful people who have very inspiring things to say about how you can do the things that you dream of doing. And I'm looking for the right publisher for this book, and hopefully it's called Reach for the Stars, and hopefully it will be out soon. Uh, I've also written about six or eight screenplays, and that's what I really want to do at this point is we're trying to set up financing right now on a little feature film nice. that I ha- have written. It's basically a Fangoria horror film. Oh. Ah. 
and it's called drag worms. And <laughs> Wait, drag drag worms? That's right. That's Dra- the, it's the name of a motorcycle gang that uh, comes back from the dead. Zombies on Harleys. That's <laughs> awesome. Oh, I nice. know Sean. I want that. And they're in, yeah. and they're in drag. <clears throat> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's your that's your movie. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. They're called drag worms because they hang out on the main drag of this little town in East Texas. Yeah, drag, and, and they you know. annoy the people. That's actually a term that comes from Austin, Texas, where the homeless people hang out on Guadalupe near the university, and everybody calls them drag worms. Oh, okay. drag worms. Oh, yeah. okay. just, That's great. I stole that term. Well, we <laughs> learned something new. Yeah. But in this movie, I have about 15 famous celebrity friends of mine from the horror field and I'm going to kill every one of them. <laughs> awesome. oh, nice. Can you give great. us a few or is that uh, under wraps? We understand. if You can't say You who, can't say anything. Well, I... Okay, a few years ago, I met Quentin Tarantino, and I said, I've written oh you gosh. into my movie. I said, you're going to have one line, and you're going to die horribly. <laughs> and he said, Carrie, tell me when and where. Uh, yeah. oh, that's nice. You know, this sounds great, but, but you know, if you have a scene that inv- involves, like, four plucky, you know, uh, po- yeah. podcasters. Four I, I know. sad, drunk nerds. No, no, Deca- no decapitate, sad, like in sad, one thing. No, you know. happy, energetic, bubbly. Yeah, ener- yeah. We're, we're, we're yes. alive, and we're here to, like, watch monsters or whatever and be killed and gruesomely. I mean, I, I know a four. Yeah. Okay, well, let's I think know. I do too. Yeah. <laughs> right. Awesome. Well, it's going to be fun. I uh, that, you, let me tell you, this is the kind of horror movie that I actually enjoy because what I want is for you to see something horrible like Linda Carter being sliced in two, oh. <laughs> falling oh. apart in two pieces. Linda oh. Carter? That's right. <laughs> That's you know right. what, though? I've always wanted two Linda Carters. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, a beautiful breast on each hand. Oh, oh, of course there is. is. That's true. Of course there and, is, man. And, and then you're going to scream when you see that, and the next minute you're going to laugh your head off because it was such a great special effect. And yeah. You, and you know right, that right. it wasn't real, but you know that the, the movie's going to be filled with moments like that. Oh, I, I can't and wait. And by the way, the yeah. fun is sewing her back together. <laughs> I think we can all agree. <laughs> the fun is that you're enjoying the magic of Hollywood. Yes. Yeah. Right, and, right. and and what this is all about. Because the fans know this. They've read the magazines that I publish, and they know that, you know, this is all a matter of creative technicians who make yeah, this stuff. It's creativity. Happen. Exactly. Right. Yeah. And they enjoy that. And when they see a great effect, they laugh and they enjoy right. it and they feel good about it. And that's what this movie is going to show you. It's going to be horrible. You're going to scream <laughs> and then you're going to laugh. And that's why special effects artists call the scenes that they do gags. Exactly. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah that's exactly. True. That's true. Yeah. Very I th- cool. Finally, we're all in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> How rare is that? I know. It's- Carrie, this has been awesome. I mean, thank it, you yeah, so thank much. You so you're much. you're yeah. so many things, but I think the main thing is that you're an inspiration. Yes, you really an inspiration, yes. and my new daddy. Oh. <laughs> I, I am I am looking forward to this new film. I I look forward to hopefully the the new uh, birth of Fangoria. Hopefully, oh Star gosh, Wars. Yes. Yeah. But uh, again, I'm just going to put it out there. You're making that film again. You know, I know <laughs> four plucky podcasters who. You know, oh, we've got a sizzle reel that you <laughs> are gonna love. Uh, we all show a little leg, so something for everyone. You know, <laughs> well, we're gonna sh- shoot it down in a small town in in East Texas, and so we definitely need a lot of townspeople there, especially at the big drugstore scene. Uh, oh. Matt, road trip. Okay. I'm right right there. Yeah, I've already now. fired up the monster party Winnebago. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It's gonna be just like racing with the devil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, Carrie, thanks again so much. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh, and it was wonderful. really Thank just you. I a enjoyed pleasure. every minute of it. Awesome. Thank you, Thank you so All much. Right. Time for listener shout out. Shout out! Very special shout outs tonight. Uh, Sean Sheridan, you're going to start us off. I oh. am. I am going to start off. This shout out I would like to give to Jackie Greed. Jackie Ooh. Greed. Jackie, Jackie, great name, by the way. Great Jackie name. Jackie Greed is a friend of mine who works at Amoeba Records <gasps> in oh. Hollywood. Oh. I we love, love Amoeba. Yeah. She, is, she, is, she works in like the DVD Blu ray sales, uh-huh. and she is like a huge fan. Fan of cult driving horror stuff, oh. all the obscure stuff. Like I got, I to love know her, her already. Yeah, I got to know her because we're always, I'm always. Yeah, you're always there. Yeah, 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 it's my second home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm always you know, asking her about new releases and stuff, and she knows this stuff. So when I go like, 
hey, Jackie, do you have the new VCI release of Twilight People? <laughs> and, sh- and she'll go, yeah, you mean the one with the commentary by David Dakota and David DeVal? I said, wow. I'll say, yeah, that one. Yeah, I have it in the back. Let me get it for you. Like, she speaks my language. and she. Do you want to tell us about this relationship? <laughs> oh, oh, hey, this is strictly hey, an hey, Amoeba Records on. relationship. Right, but no, okay. she is awesome. Uh, her and her boyfriend actually, like, collect 16 millimeter and 35 millimeter films. Oh, wow. Oh, oh, I, I need to meet these you, people. Yeah. Do? And yeah. uh, they have screenings, you know, around LA, and and she just knows all this stuff. And she's like I said, she always keeps me up to date and never does me wrong with like all, you know information and all the releases. But especially the, the reason why I'm giving her a shout out is also because tonight's episode would probably not have existed if Jackie didn't help us out. Because I asked Jackie if we could have um, some Monster Party flyers at Amoeba Records, <gasps> oh. and she said sure. And it was actually. Kerry O'Quinn's assistant, Hunter Wayne, who came across a flyer Great guy. Uh, oh. at Amoeba and then said, oh, this looks like pretty cool and showed it to Kerry and then Kerry said, yeah, I want to be in this podcast. No so, way. So that's right. how, nope. kind of how we got Kerry O'Quinn on here is because uh, Jackie uh, let, let us put these flyers. I actually think Kerry Fantastic. O'Quinn said, I, I demand to be on this yeah, podcast. Yeah, he was very interested. Yeah, he said, so, Hunter, get me, book me on right, this show. Right. Uh, so, right. Y- yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. So, but no, but so Jackie, uh, thanks so much. Uh, you know, you're you're awesome, and yeah. I'll, you I'll, are. I'll, yes. I'll meet it again soon, buying more stuff. So, thanks again for go uh, to Amoeba. Yeah, yes, yes, always. Exactly. So. And Matt, you have a shout out as well. I do. You Ooh. do. And this comes from our time at the last Monster Palooza convention. Oh. Monster Palooza. Oh. I would like to give a shout out to longtime fan listener of the show. Great guy, great artist, Jim Moore. Jim oh, yes. Moore. Oh, yeah. Jim, oh, yes. Jim yeah. is a yeah. very, very talented sculptor who made a, he makes these ceramic art pieces and he gave us a ceramic art piece of the alien. It's, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. From the movie Alien. Oh, and, and he autographed it. And he, you didn't notice yes, this? Yes. I did not know he that. Did you yeah. not take a look at this? He wrote us a nice uh, little note there on the base. Could you read that? Uh? It's, it says, to my pals. Pals. Monster party. You guys rock. We do oh. rock. We do. We do, Jim. Oh, I, his, his work is amazing. It really is great. It's a beautiful piece. And uh, on Facebook, he's at More Monsters. Or, or check at More Monsters, which I guess is uh, Twitter. But it's it's M O O R E Monsters. M O O R E Monsters. Check it out. Amazing stuff. Yeah, and you know, Jim, thanks again for this wonderful, wonderful uh, alien creature. The my only issue is you, oh, it's, sh- it's, it's divided into four pieces. It's gonna oh, be, yes, yes, we can, so, yes, we so, have to share it. I we guess we're to, gonna uh, need three more. Yeah, but you don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind, do you? No, no, no. You know what we can do? We eat, it can live at each of our yeah. houses. It's you like know, a, for it's time. Like a well, little ceramic mascot. Yeah. Ultimately, yeah. Carrie and I are looking for a new house. Oh. Yeah. The condominium has been great, but you know it's we've the collection certainly has grown out of it. <laughs> it has, and so have we. Just the we need more room. <laughs> we need a bigger place, and so we're looking for something. And one of the goals is to have a permanent place within this house, the monster party permanent set. Yes, and museum. Ooh, yes, like, like a bat cave. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yes. Ooh, I'm... and we'll have all our artifacts that have been signed by our guests over the years, nice. and we'll have a nice little display case for them all. And so that's where this will live. That's if awesome. you guys allow it. Of course. Awesome. Well, <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. No, I, I no, knew it. I would have no, it no other way. No, no, no. I, I agree. I, 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 sure. And you could take it on trips if you want. Look. It could be like the traveling gnome. <laughs> okay, I like that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, all right, all right. Like, yeah, the yeah, Grand no, Canyon. No, 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 no. That's, I, that's very selfish of me. I, I'm, no, I'm, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm we'll get turning the new things. lease. I think this is great. I think that <laughs> can, it stays I, in the no, Monster Party Museum. You turn a new leaf every, a couple times every episode. You've got a lot of leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll take it with us to Austin when we're in drag worms. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, you are a blossoming tree. Mary Stroth. <laughs> All right. Well, I also want to give a special thank out to one of our... Sp- a thank out? <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a new word. It's a new term. I like that. I like thank it. Out. I, I'm, I, I, thank well, out. It's like, a, it's like a shout you, okay. a shout you right. or a okay. thank okay. out. This is very funny. Thank Jim out. and Booze. I want to give a special out. thank you. Okay, great. Special thank you to our sponsors at Creature Feature. Yay! Yay! 
creature features and people have heard the news that they've lost their lease in Burbank but hey they're still going to have a presence they're still going to do art shows they're still going to do uh, mu- they're going to sell DVDs and, and music you, all you have to do is go to their website and find out where exactly they're going to be they're going to have these special little functions and it's going to be really really cool so just go to creaturefeatures.com it'll give you all the information that you need to know okay awesome. great also want to give a special thanks to Time Tunnel Toys Yay! Yay! Time Tunnel Toys Toys, located at 1583 Meridian Avenue in San Jose, California. And Joe and Sharon, they have a wonderful store filled with all kinds of wonderful vintage stuff, vintage toys, uh, black velvet paintings. And then and every four months, they have this San Jose Super Toy Comic and Collectible Show. Ooh. So go to timetunneltoys.com. It'll give you all the information about the show and their store. Great place. Yeah, let's also remind our listeners that you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at Monster Party TV. On Twitter, we are at Monster Party HQ. Instagram is also Monster Party HQ. Uh, we are now selling Monster Party merch at yeah. our Monster Party store on cool. eBay, which is called Monster Party Store. Who would have guessed? In addition to the beautiful, breathable Monster Party cap with 17 billion stitches. Yes. Oh, you're bringing that one back, huh? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, th- and, I and thought you know it was what? time. And a new leaf? <laughs> and a new leaf? Yeah. You're right, James. You're right. <laughs> wow. Nice. I, don't, I don't like it. We're, I don't like this new leaf. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How many stitches again? 4,500 billion million. Wow. Wow. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And how, how about okay. the t-shirts, James? There will be t-shirts. T-shirts! There, there are now Yay! t-shirts. T-shirts wow. are being sold on our eBay store in various sizes. Perhaps it's not every size yet, but we're we're getting there. <laughs> yeah, but check it out. It's, uh, if you're if you're lucky, that we will have it in your size. Yeah. If if you're maybe too big or too small. If you're too big, lose we some have, weight. We have a, small, a vast range. No, we have uh, a lot of uh, triple <laughs> yeah. smalls and triple larges. <laughs> and you know, it just yeah. nothing yeah. in between. No, no, no. Just for our listeners, know if, if that's your size, you know, let us know and and to give James a, a heads up. We'll maybe custom we'll, make yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there yeah. are two different styles. Is the classic monster. Party logo and our other logo, which was designed by comic book artist and friend of the show, Derek Roberts. That's yes. right. Yeah. So, right. so you can you can go for the classic or or the logo one, or you can go for both. Yeah. Yeah. Go uh, for both. Go for both. And, Live, and damn it. Live. And those there's extra swag. There'll be coasters swag. and magnets and monster party flyers. What? And yeah. if I and if I could just say you that, can say that these shirts are very high quality shirts. These they, are not they are. those cheap. They're not they're cheap. Not, they're not cheap. Shirts. No, sure, yeah. these no, are. Yeah. They're these heavy, heavyweight cotton. Yes. Yeah. I, I believe they're pre shrunk. They're breathable. The yeah. cotton they're breathable. is very nice. Yes. It's I'm just saying, this good is, cotton. It's not a cheap shirt. Yes. Right. On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I am Larry Stroth. And I am James Gonis. Keep America strong! Read horror and sci-fi magazines like Starlog and Fangoria. Let's all take a look at this centerfold. Is that your favorite line here? <laughs> oh no. That's from uh, No, it's I, from Faulty, Faulty Towers. Towers. I think our favorite line might be No, 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 no. No, that's your favorite line. <laughs> it might be interiors. No. What do you think, Sean? Uh, yeah, um, save it for the show. That's save it for the show. We were thinking of making a, a shirt that says save it for the show because at times we would have guests come over and we start talking about stuff and we're whoa, whoa, this is great for the show. What do we do? Don't don't spoil it. Let's well, I mean, save You've it. already said that to me as I was <laughs> <laughs> beginning <laughs> to tell you the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So, all right. We're all in good shape. Who's ready to laugh? I think laugh? your mic is, you got a nice level <laughs> there and I can, I'm going to ride it. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. And if for some reason, like in an hour into this, if you feel like, you know what, guys, I, I got I to gotta go to the restroom or something, we, we stop. Well, you know, well, it's, and it's we'll taped. It's not yeah. live. Ex- yeah. Right. Yes, you yeah, can do exactly. that. Exactly. Right. Okay. <laughs> or just make the, uh, you know, car skidding to a halt sound. <laughs> Perfect. That's a horse, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old fashioned. All right. All right. Okay. Ready? Yes. All right, everybody. What is that? That's an airplane. Can we just wait till that goes? It's almost, we're in a flight path. We had some cricket sounds a while back, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, but we took care of that. <clears throat> yes. How? Killed well, it was someone's phone. We made phone. you speak less. <laughs> hey, 
I'm kidding. No, no, it's Come a new leaf. On. I'm okay. going along with wow. it. All right. Yeah, I've, He's I've so been, sensitive. Turned over a, a new leaf. No, no, every, no. Every episode. Okay. No, okay. I'm. Okay, here we go. Greetings. Who is that upstairs? Jesus Christ! Carrie? Could you possibly just close the door? I can hear you. Oh, hey, Mark, we're recording, by the way. It's, it, we're doing a podcast. Oh it's the God. whole reason so why we're here. I think it's, uh, so sorry. So, Mark, did I mention Mark Peter was uh, on The Tonight Show with John Carson? <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. Someone did. Woo! Hey! Whoa. So, Carrie, that was awesome. So, what we're going to do, the last two things we're going to do, we're just going to take a, a few group photos that we're going to post on Facebook. And the last thing is we do a little video With tea. clothes on? Yes, <laughs> clothes, yes, okay. yes. Um, no, on. no. No, no, no. I'm, no. I'm, I'm um, just asking. But we, we do we'll see how it goes. We'll, we'll do okay. a little... I think that was full circle. The only... Right. I realized the one thing I, I didn't get to talk about, and I'm bummed about this, but, you know, whatever... It's the special issues, the special effects oh, yeah, issue, the, the toy. But you know yeah, what? Yeah. It's, we, we got the meat and potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was amazing. Yes. I actually really liked the, uh, the Starlog poster issues where there were just posters. Well, and that was a whole, there was a whole, it wasn't even just Starlog too. It was all these different companies. There was a craze of the, right. of yeah, of yeah, the, right. uh, yeah, the poster magazine. Right. And I have the Dawn of the Dead, and there's I think there was an Alien, wasn't there? And, and pretty much every movie around that time, there was right, a Blade right. Runner one. I wish I had bought the Dawn of the Dead. The Di yeah. Dawn of the Dead one you could still find yeah. for a fairly reasonable price. Okay, I've got it signed by Romero. Wow, and cool. Ken Forey, Caesar Romero, but he was available. <laughs> yeah, just use another Romero. <laughs> it's good. It's the one with. Um, uh, God. Caesar Romero would sign anything. <laughs> and you would, and, yeah, if he wants to sign something, you let him sign it. Because yeah. he'll get uh, mustache paint on you. And you don't want that. Yeah. That, no, that was really good. It was. I mean, I hope when I'm 80 years old, I have that much going on and have that much enthusiasm. No, and I don't see it. I don't, I don't have I that now. I know. It's, no. yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I know what but, my interview is going to be. <laughs> Where am I? Like someone fix the toilet. Yeah, I did it myself. How do you like that? Wow. I'm really oh. When I talk about the toilet, sure. Yeah. Sorry, you heard that. I was no, no, that's fine. That's fine, Mark. That's fine, Mark. We're, I, we're just recording a show that goes out across the world. But that's fine. No, no, that's fine. That's fine. As long as you're having fun. For our listeners, Mark, <laughs> Mark Pitta, who had, who had nothing yeah, else. Yeah, we're, we're always recording. Nothing else better to do. You know, and this is the same guy, this is the same comedian who's been on The Tonight Show with Johnny Carson. I hey. love, I, I'm, I can't wait for the link between what you're about to say <laughs> and what you just said. No, I'm just, and, and he's, he's here. Because, you know, he's got nothing else better to do, and he wants to take some photos, a little video. Huh? What? what? He's promoting our show. Oh, yeah. he's promoting our show. Yeah. yeah. You didn't know that? Yeah. But, but see. I, did, I didn't know what you thought. Oh, I, I've got a, I got a slow uh, evening. I think somehow, I'm... somehow, <laughs> he's like, he saw the camera and somehow thought that, like, the camera was stealing his soul, like, in the old <laughs> days of the Old West. You don't understand about your uh, last guest. I'm sorry. I can't hear you. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I yeah, know. It's on I, I know. It's on. Your last guest, the only thing I understand how come he didn't get drunk and repeat the stories over and over again? <laughs> I, can't, I can't wait sure. for you at 80. We have you, on. <laughs> you just keep repeating the same sentence. <laughs> Did I ever tell you about the time? Did I ever tell you about the time? All right. Shall we? Oh, I always miss Mark Pitta when he's not around. <laughs> really? You miss him? <laughs> yeah, he's, there's he, a thing called friendship, Larry. No, I, I know it's something about called friendship. You know, no, I, I like the guy. He's funny. Wow, <laughs> the hostility that he has wow, that's completely misplaced. Yep. I don't under see what. Why are you? Why are you talking to that? I thought you're talking to me. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna talk to you. Well, I, he, the camera I, loves me. No, but, as Mark will attest, <laughs> it's not hostility. Why do you think it's hostility? It's not hostility at all. I, it I like sounds the, a little hostile right now. It's, I like it's the passive hostility. Yeah, is it? Yeah, 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 kind of. You don't realize how hostile that you sound. Really? Yes. I I thought it was. Uh, do we need to take a vote? How many for hostile? Yeah. yeah. Are you serious, Sean? <laughs> well, yeah, Sean? A little bit. A little you? Bit. 
<laughs> I thought you were my friend. I think yeah. it's great that Mark is chronicling the breakup <laughs> of Monster <laughs> Party. The breakup on. Rarely do you have that moment. No, no, caught on camera. I, no, yeah. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to go out on a limb here. Okay. <laughs> okay. I can't wait I'm for this. Just I, now? No, no. I, I'm going to say the great thing about Monster Party, and we've been friends for a long time. Yes, uh, we have. Right. Long you and I have been have. friends for. Yeah. You and I have been. Yeah. Long time friends. Yes. yes. Yeah. You and I. <laughs> <laughs> but it's we're like, working it's, on it's it. It's like so. I know. I, it's like I listen to you. I, it's like I may blow up or something, and, and you say, "Hey, as a friend, Larry, you're being hostile." And I'm like, "Really?" And I, 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 I mean, look. In a, in a and then the way. next time no. we see you, it's completely different. It's amazing. It's like it's it's like it's a wonderful life or a Christmas Carol, <laughs> which I love those movies. I know, but have you learned anything from them? Yes, I have. I've I've learned, yeah. and I've ten thirty nine is the time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Thank I'm, you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. I'm ready to do this. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, I have a shout out too. Oh, cool. Okay. <clears throat> Who want, who's going to be the first shout out? Uh, well, I think I should go first because no, okay. I thought, direct, I thought directly, he should. Do you have well, a shout out? I would think he should, should go off first because he normally no, goes no, no, first. No, yeah. no, but I'm going to defer to the first person to do the shout. So oh, okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Do you have a shout out? No. No. But you, oh, can so still, you, you, can still, you don't have a shout out at all? You should no. still say. Sean, yes, yeah. that's a yeah. good idea. That's, yeah. that's, that's, you should still say time for a shout out. That's a good idea, yeah. yes. Mm-hmm. That's your time for a listener yeah. shout out. Yeah. I don't really have yeah. one right now, yeah. but. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. don't do that. No, I don't no, plan to do that. that. Yeah. Okay. You and, make it your own. And, and lots of energy, Sean. <laughs> I will, I will. You know, like you're happy to give this shout out. I am. I'm very happy. Is that is that being? That's really hostile. <laughs> yeah. it, it's being helpful. I, know, I'm, I know. Look I'm, over here. I'm kidding. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's just being helpful. I'm just trying to help yeah. my friend. Yeah, I, I know. You know. To, Stay on yeah. him. Close up. <laughs> no, I just, okay. Slam close up. Okay, here we go. Ten forty one. All right. All right. <laughs> on that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I. I'm Sean Sheridan. I am Larry Stroth. And I am James Gonis. Keep America strong! <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, you, you started this. All like, I did was just say my name, but you, you turned you, it into... You, you, you did it with extra you, you, gusto. Yeah, you did, did, you, did, you, not hear, did you not hear Sean? Right, yeah. I was following his yeah, lead. You inspired me to You inspired go Sean. Okay. I did, yeah. I, see, I don't know how powerful I sound. <laughs> that, was, just, that was like a trailer. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. And you just destroyed a great, great moment. Yeah. I'm yeah, sorry. Matt. I'm sorry. We could try to... Re- I bet we could get there again. I bet you we could. I guess do it. I feel it. I don't know. <laughs> Come on, you've turned over a new leaf, Larry, so you're you're ready to go. Yeah. All right. Okay? All right. All right. All right. It's midnight. <laughs> it's 1051. <laughs> okay, here we go. Okay. Jeez. On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I am Sean Sheridan. I am Larry Stroth. And I am James Gonis. Keep America strong! Read horror and sci-fi magazines like Fangoria. Let's take a look at this centerfold. Ah! I like that. That's good. I like that. Did you think you were too hot on the? I might have been. Yes. I just let's do it one more time. Let's do it. Everyone should scream when he holds the centerfold. Oh yeah. Yeah yeah. But 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 you say you should say like Starlog. And, and I'll, do I'll, do okay. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. And then, okay. and then, when you go, we'll all go out. Yeah. yeah. Let's take it back a little yeah, bit. I agree. I agree. On the, you know, everything. Yeah. Oh. yeah. I like just that. a little bit. Okay. Just a just a tad. Just a hair. Uh, Look. Uh, wait. Uh, not for James. James. I know you can't help it. No, James but should why stay. Why don't we do it normal? I'm Sean Sheer. Oh, because, because <laughs> maybe we're how we're trying to have yeah. a little fun. We're trying to be loose. We're trying to you know do something different and fresh. Okay. <laughs> Whatever you guys want to do, right. I'll do. Okay. okay. No, I want you to get into it. I, yeah. I'm into it. There's a little. There's a. I know. There's a moment between crazy. What is the sound? It's it's Mark in the <laughs> what background. What the fuck is wrong with you? He's restless. Yeah. <laughs> he, right, let's go. Let's go. Now is not the time to practice <laughs> ventriloquism. 